All right, let's get into WCW Ooh. Nitro for January 4th, 1999. Oh my. So as I said at the top, we watched the episode of Raw from the same exact date where Mankind won the WWF Championship. <laughs> 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 So uh, we went over some of the Observer stuff at the time on the last episode, but I was able to grab some things that I don't think we mentioned. Um, I'm going to say some at the top here of the review, and then I will save uh, some for the end of the show, which is about what happens at the end of the show. Oh, okay. Uh, so from the Observer on January 4th, 1999, the press in Mexico City ripped Vampiro a new one for walking out again. <laughs> Actually, a lot of the <laughs> WWE wrestlers were ripped in the press. Juventud Guerrero was ripped for doing the crotch chops. Basically, they were stating that when wrestlers go to the U.S., they forget about wrestling and learn lewd mannerisms. <laughs> 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 Especially when you come to DPW. <laughs> you can't you stop flipping people off. Bullshit, yeah. <laughs> Silver King was ripped for coming back overweight. Again, a product of e the easy American wrestling style. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yes. Dandy and Hector Garza were praised for not picking up the bad habits for the rest of them did. <laughs> That's <laughs> brutal. They're not coming back. Yeah, you get the fuck out. You you stay here forever. <laughs> Uh, in uh, our usual Onita update, <laughs> Atsushi Onita held a photo session, which he announced would be for training photos. And when the press got there, Onita said he doesn't need to train, that he's a natural athlete and would use foreign objects to beat Kensuke Sasaki. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's that's how you should look at matches. <laughs> that's the correct way. Just beat them to yeah, death. <laughs> exactly. Uh, in contract updates here, Chris Benoit, Dean Malenko, and Eddie Guerrero have not signed three-year contract ex uh, have not signed three-year contract extensions, but have basically agreed to terms. Uh, the deals are for 1.35 million in total over three years. I believe broken down in 400,000, 450,000, and 500,000. Oh, although wait. I haven't done that specifically. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, at one time or another, all three were at real odds with the company and wanted to leave for WWF and was considered almost a sure thing that they would leave. The money is the main reason for staying. The WWF attempts to sell that the sky is the limit on salary didn't work in these negotiations because the word is out that even in this fantastic business year, most of the WWF wrestlers, aside from the very top guys, aren't making all that much more than their downside guarantees. WWF expressed interest in all three and still have interest in all of them. Uh, Benoit more than the other two. The WCW deal guarantees the weekly paycheck at the same level as usual in the event of injuries, which has to be taken strongly into account because of all the styles they utilize. Uh, the feeling is that Bischoff will have to justify these deals and push all three more than ever, if only to justify paying them at that level. Uh, Benoit was told he was going to work with Bret Hart. And uh, so, and oh, Rey Mysterio is also in the same boat in regard to ha not having signed, but basically expected to do so shortly. These guys are saying they're staying, but I'm pretty sure sh how soon after this are they gone? Now, you, you, what three again? Name the three names again. It Benoit, Benoit, Malenko, and Guerrero. Not Saturn. Not Saturn. No, not, and not Shane Douglas either. <laughs> not Shane Douglas either. Which is weird. I feel like out of all of the, well, maybe Benoit was protected a, sure. a pretty good amount. I mean, Eddie, Eddie was. I mean, they were all. To be honest with you, they were all pretty. You know, looking back on it, we've always we always heard like, especially if you came up. They were watching like a lot shit. of WWE that like yeah. yeah they went to WCW because they were just treated like shit all the fucking time. Yeah. Um, but you know Saturn for the most part was in angles almost every single show that we've seen him on at the very least. He, he had, was in angles. He was in groups. He yeah, was always yeah. Doing he was a big you know I mean? foil for somebody. It always yeah. But you can say the same about all three of them. All, yeah, Benoit I mean, all four was in the Four Horsemen. Um, yeah, Eddie had Eddie, the LWO and sure was doing a lot of stuff too and. I don't know. Like but, uh, maybe, maybe the I think uh, and at least you know the history shows that they were uh, at least in you know Eddie uh, Eddie's regard. You know he uh, wanted to get out of the cruiserweights and they. Just you know what's crazy? How things that. have changed over time is like those guys back then they wanted to be more and get out more out of it. And I feel like yeah. nowadays, like no one gives a fuck. Like it's they no, no it's if, cool if they're, you signed. know, you, I'm signed, <laughs> yeah. and th yeah, that's yeah, the that's end of it. Yeah, yeah, I'll, <laughs> I hope I'll I never get coconut loop for four years. Yeah, I hope I never me. get that phone call. Other than that, I'm okay. <laughs> I'll do. So, I'll just be over here. So it looks yeah. like it's another year before January 2000 is when they leave with Eddie Guerrero. Oh, really? I thought for some reason I thought they come in '99. And, wow, uh, okay. and Shane Douglas took a hiatus, but he returned in April because WWF didn't want him. So. Yeah, because Shane Douglas was leaving with all of them. <laughs> they saw the pit bull match. Oh my god! Yeah, somebody sabotaged him. It was probably Paul Lee's. You should watch this match from Bailey Lee. <laughs> <laughs> this was just last month. <laughs> yeah, I really tested it out. Because <laughs> yeah, all of ECW's footage looked like from the same ten year period. You're it was right. all the same quality. Yeah, you're so right. And same dudes different. too. Yeah. I 
saw someone someone replied to I think one of our uh reviews on on the YouTube that we put up. Uh they said Paul Heyman was cashing in on the IOU glitch. <laughs> oh yeah, I did see that. <laughs> IOU glitch. Infinite IOU glitch. Yeah, infinite IOU glitch. <laughs> I'll get you next time, pal. We're about to Very start putting PayPal. down. We're about to start doing it ourselves. <laughs> the, I, 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 <laughs> uh, the expectation seems to be that Nash will give the belt to Hogan at the Georgia Dome. The idea looks to go back to what put WCW in the, that position in 1996, and that is a strong WCW led by the Horsemen versus a strong NWO, which at this point appears to be Hogan, Nash, Hall, Steiner, and Luger. It is a strong NWO. And, you yeah. know, really, 98 was still a very good year for them. Some, sure. you know, could say that it's probably their best creatively fun year it's probably uh, since the best probably year, 96. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and then, like, you know, we, we, we're going to talk about it a little later, too. I'm sure we'll get more into the finger poke of doom and all that stuff, too. But Yeah, sure. Um, the idea to get the NWO back together is not a bad one. I just, you know, I think this was probably a, not the right idea to do it. You I know. mean, the way that they do it. Is yeah. Well, I mean, really, it all great. comes down to if you like thought more about the match or like, you know, thought more about the fans, I think really is the biggest thing. If you thought the more main the main event fans, of a 40,000 attendance show. Yeah. Like, you know, all you had. To, yeah. If anybody in WCW thought for a second, like we respect our fans. Yeah. Is there any cooler way that we can bring back our most over group ever? Yeah, like, dude, this is going to be, like, pretty fucking cool. Steiner and Luger and fucking Nash and yeah. Hall and uh, Hogan and, like, he's running for fucking president. Like, yeah. we can't... <laughs> we and they've been out for a cool. while, too. The Wolfpack in Hollywood, like, this is them joining together again. Like, it could be, like, you know, something substantial, but it is just... Yeah, the, the end game for what they had here, not a bad idea. But yeah, but, no respect yeah. at all here for anybody. No, 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 it's just, all just crazy. Fuck Goldberg. <laughs> this was like cool. basically like a fuck the observer type angle thing. It's yeah. like I, the, I, gotcha. yeah. the idea was to like have Goldberg to go against the group, and then like I don't even know they didn't do a shit with that. Like Gold, I, I think Goldberg like hurt his arm and smashing a limo and then he was gone that was just didn't. i mean that was definitely a like soon. keep him down sort of thing because like yeah i mean you know he was red hot and then all of a sudden now he's selling <laughs> you know yeah, he's, he's selling he's now right. when kevin nash is getting into booking and stuff like well, you know, you know. Him and then he's da selling. dash will tell you it was the greatest idea ever you know you got you gotta let goldberg lose and then, eventually and then, and then we'll build up this monster sometime. group for goldberg to destroy and then yeah that's yeah that's gonna happen i'm sure and then we'll turn him heel <laughs> and then day off I, i'm not really not feeling Feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last part here for uh, this beginning part of the observer, and then we'll get back to more later. Uh, plans for a Bart Gunn versus Tank Abbott brawl for all rules match have fallen through when WWF felt Tank Abbott's asking price of fifty five thousand dollars was exorbitant. <laughs> there have been numerous ideas on what to do with Bart Gunn, usually centering around different opponents with the UFC backgrounds under those rules and shoot matches. Call it a day on the Bart Gunn thing. Y'all don't <laughs> care. <laughs> Y'all don't care. He fucking knocked out my boy, and we're going to do something with this no, fucking piece of shit. <laughs> yes, we are. God damn it. <laughs> uh, Kimo was talked about, who was super over the UFC guy early on. Uh, because of how stylistically they match up, Kimo, who's not very good at standing with gloves on but has a great physical appearance, should actually work out as a great opponent for Gunn to impressively wax. Butterbean's name always comes up but Butterbean is still in heavy demand as a boxer and hasn't been able to fit it into a schedule although they do have him signed for one more date stemming from the Mark Merrow angle that was never completed which I don't really know if I remember that they were gonna Look, have... man no one cares about the Mark Merrow angle let's move on <laughs> no, no, we, he's a shable and we like Mark Merrow no, he's a shooter on, and he's got the gloves on and he's fighting god damn it yeah, uh, a lot of people talked about gun versus Ken Shamrock but I'd say the odds of that happening are slim because it wasn't worth the injury risk as a top guy in hindsight, even though some would say Gunn's knockout of Steve Williams, yes, uh, was amongst <laughs> the most memorable wrestling television moments ever. And Gunn did make a name for himself, at least among people on the inside. The number of injuries in the tournament made for the overall Brawl for All tournament a failure. So, well, yeah, so we're yeah, moving on right. from these two guys. Right? <laughs> Hey, if you, if you do want to check it out, we did an SGH on Brawl for All. We watched every we Brawl for All match. That was like number 13. If you want to see that, we actually praised Bart Gunn on that. We thought Bart Gunn was cool as fuck when we watched that because, you know, he had a good look. Well, that was, was cool. a year ago and Not times changed. Shit. No, Bart Gunn was cool. He was awesome. <laughs> well, you're right. I think he's pretty cool myself. <laughs> <laughs> Not as cool as Steve Williams. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely. right. He does the Oklahoma Steve. He was an awesome. I like that show. He does the Dr. Bomb. And, uh, that was his move. Yeah. <laughs> a, you know he's got a fat pecker. Yeah. Well, he got a vasectomy, Sean. I don't know. He's got a. He only has a balls now. Just balls. All balls. 
All Steve boys Williams. know Cockbart. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Steve Williams as well. He ripped them all. I love Steve Williams. <laughs> <laughs> that Holy, can we get to the show? <laughs> I'm sorry about that, Dan. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was thinking about Steve Williams. <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> All right. So, time to get the WCW Nitro here. Uh, yes. We start off with the cold open. This is a three hour show, just so everybody knows. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, my is. God. <laughs> You, we've probably all seen the Kevin Nash wine shoots before, right? Uh huh. Yeah. He talks about how, like, when he was putting the shit together, he's like, "I don't even know how we put this shit together at all at any point." Because <laughs> he's like, we, these "We got three hours on Monday. We got to fucking tape like two hours for Thunder. We got worldwide and all this shit." And he's like, "I don't know how we made yeah. any of this shit work." Um, and and even then, WCW's roster was way smaller than something like you know WWF or AEW is today you know what I mean like sure yeah. oh my god yeah they would bring guys in jobbers try to fill stuff up and things like that but the main roster of guys was you know it wasn't that big of a, uh, of a roster so they're trying no, to fucking man, figure they, stuff mean, out for everybody they were desperate they were booking Hugh Morris <laughs> yeah we'll get to the open here in a minute <laughs> yeah you're right desperate is a good thing but uh you know the three hours they had they they did have the roster work I think I think Nash even said it in one of his shoots he's like if Thunder wasn't there I think Nitro would have been way better Probably, yeah, because you only have to consume, you know, that's, and you can probably say the same about any show that's long. If it's one long show, that's fucking, you know, I can deal with that. But, you know, yeah. like if, AEW, if AEW's pay-per-view is, you know, five hours long, but, you know, you only have to watch Dynamite, that's probably not as bad. But you also got to watch Rampage and all that other shit. You know, it's a lot going on there. Yeah, absolutely is a lot going on. Uh, cold open here. Kevin Nash versus Goldberg happened, if you guys missed out on that. At the pay per view, was, was it Starcade? Starcade? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So Starcade, Kevin Nash versus Goldberg. This is where Scott Hall tasers Goldberg, and then Kevin Nash hits the jackknife. But in the match, Kevin Nash doesn't know. I don't believe that he was tasered, uh, and then hits the jackknife right. and beats the streak and becomes the champion. He doesn't know till after the fact that Goldberg was tasered, and he's like, "This sucks." Yeah, he just thought <laughs> that Goldberg bullshit. had a. Yeah, Goldberg got a heart attack or something. And he yeah, just hit with a jackknife. <laughs> well, all right, I'll hit you with a jackknife Dude. here, son. You're, you're on the floor shaking. <laughs> it's fine. I'll kill you. Well, he thought he put the bricks to him real hard. He said, damn, I'm yeah, I guess a so. champion. Uh, it showed the same lockup like four fucking times here. And then Goldberg doing a the fucking match. spin kick. <laughs> I don't know what the hell is happening here, I man. I can't imagine that the match was very long I you think the match they didn't was, go like 20 right i don't know honestly i've never even i don't know if i've watched the full match before to be honest with you we should watch that for uh for patreon yeah okay i'm good i'm done with that they show the nitro girls and announce the show this is at the uh, another thing i didn't like i guess this like missed me but this january show finger poker doom was in the georgia dome Forty thousand fans are here yeah, this is like a gigantic fucking show. I mean, like they sell you know, out you, the Georgia they, Dome every fucking time they come here. Forty thousand people. Sold, we reviewed the other Georgia Dome show too, right? With Hogan and and uh, yeah. Goldberg. And Goldberg's yeah. like a big draw for them. Holy fuck, he's molten hot, bro. Uh, this is also the first Nitro where Ric Flair is now the president of WCW. That's Richard M. Flair. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> Dickum, Dickum Flair. <laughs> Richard Cock <Cotton> Flair. <laughs> the, uh, the Nitro Girl music here is very Masquerita Sagrada like, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that shit's yeah. awesome. Um, yeah. The Nitro Girls fire pyro confetti balloons. I said, oh, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes into the show, they've already celebrated that WCW is here. Yeah, apparently this is to celebrate the Nitro Party winner. Yeah, Howard. 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 Dude, it cuts to the Nitro Party suite. Yeah. My man Howard. Yeah, go burn. Yeah, go go burn. No, my nephew in Chicago. <laughs> you guys, boys, Marty and... That's his boys over there. Yeah, the, who, who's the interviewer guy? Do you know? Do you catch his name? Uh, Todd Pettingill. No way. No, <laughs> He's no. Fucking just... Ben Gill. He said, Do you want to introduce some of the guys and some of the ladies? And the guy says, Oh, yeah, how are we doing? Come on, go Goldberg. Yeah. I'm fucking hell. They all want Goldberg to beat Kevin Nash because the, the big. Dr Listen to this. This is why this is an even a crazier <laughs> moment. So, this Georgia Dome show was probably sold out on Goldberg versus Kevin Nash for the WCW title. They probably yeah. knew 
that since Goldberg got fucked got over at fucked. Starcade, they yes. will probably win it back in the Georgia yeah. Dome main event. Yeah. In his hometown, yes. Goldberg, well, not real hometown, but that's where he was but built still, from. Sure, yeah, He yeah, was yeah. built from Atlanta, Georgia, so it's like, fuck, this guy he is our guy. Built, this so, this yeah. is our guy. This is our guy. Yeah. That is Howard's guy for sure. That is like, yeah, how, Goldberg! Yeah, Goldberg. He had so the Goldberg shirt, the sign that said Goldberg. They're all Goldberg yeah, guys. Yeah, he was there with the boys. Yeah, he had all the boys. They let him bring all the boys. Like, <laughs> this man had to search for cool. boys, man. <laughs> we got to fill this room. Uh, so Goldberg, like I said, the main event for this show was marketed for Goldberg versus Kevin Nash rematch for the WCW title. Everyone in this room is probably like 24, but they look like they're 35, which is classic a, 90s style. You know, there was some in the water eventually. That maybe <laughs> they all, some of them were like, they just got off fucking work. <laughs> Pencil still in the shirt. Pin still in they the shirt. They got the hammer jeans. Yeah, they're <laughs> crazy <laughs> over there. <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, we kick off this molten hot 40K sellout Georgia Dome show with Glacier versus Hugh Morris with Jimmy Hart. <laughs> Holy fucking shit, man. Yeah, Glacier comes out. I'm like, all right, I like Glacier. Glacier's cool. You know, he can do the cryotic kick. He does the sub zero. That's He's going to awesome. do the cryotic kick. <laughs> yeah, of course he is. And then here comes Hugh Morris with Jimmy Hart. Oh, here we go, baby. You look like shit. Shave your head. <laughs> <laughs> shave your sideburns, baby. Shave that fucking shave your ball sack for me, too. Look baby. at you, baby. You're a weird guy. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You're going to go on to really be a weird little fucker, aren't you? <laughs> so am I, daddy. <laughs> I guess I can remind you guys that this was the unopposed hour of Nitro where they could just do whatever the fuck they wanted because Raw wasn't on. So, oh, so these three hour okay. ones, their first hour was always dog shit where it's just like, we just sure. put wrestlers on. It doesn't matter. We'll build to that our second sense. and main event hour. That's kind of okay. what they were doing here. Yeah. So that's they, why you uh, get uh, Glacier and Hugh Morris. That's why we get Glacier and Hugh. We could put this on Thunder. <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they do the rematch on Thunder. Glacier is built for Thunder and he's on Nitro. He's very blue. He's super yeah. blue. Yeah. Fun, for man. thunder. You're right. Yeah, they, uh, he should have been like fucking flamehead or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Glacier and the Iceman on this show. They're not on thunder. He never had a on? tag team partner called like Nitro Dude or something. No, he had fucking Wrath or whatever. Oh, or was yeah, that, uh, yeah Wrath and Gla oh, Glacier and Wrath. Yeah, they were the rivals. Mortis. Yeah. Wrath Mortis, is yeah. Wrath's on his. I'm done with this shit. Run here. We'll Rath's talk about on his that shit on this show. Yeah, he's done with it. He, he grabbed the microphone. I said, "Hey, yo, it must be coming." He didn't even say nothing. Yes, that they're almost done with this. I think. <laughs> <laughs> He's about to put on a black shirt. Uh, Shivani's talking about Hugh Morris's brand new look, which is just we do not head. care. <laughs> he just shaved his head. <laughs> uh, they're talking about the main event. Talking about Nash is looking to right the wrong of last week and give Goldberg another shot at the title. And he also says Hollywood Hogan is here tonight to talk to his fans and that he's retiring from the ring to get into politics, <laughs> which is great. which was a real like I, I don't know if, I imagine like news probably ran that as like yeah oh, it was what the fuck it was crazy guys it was huge. I remember that I I yeah. remember thinking he was actually gonna run for president he was just well he said it on like Jay Leno's show right yeah, yeah they, he said well, on Jay Leno he was gonna announce his running partner and like he had a cabinet yeah it was real I yeah. think he was on the. Jay Leno, like, after this Correct. or something, he was supposed to be, like, they were announcing that he was going to be on Jay Leno coming oh, okay. up, either, like, yeah. tonight after Nitro or some fucking shit, I don't know. I think he was going to announce it on this show, maybe, yeah, and they just... He was going to announce his running partner. They WCW loved announcing stuff, and they just fucking just the not doing fans it. that tuned in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't Fuck respect people's time at all. No, no way. way. <laughs> they no got Glacier way. out here doing a people's eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> Repeatedly. He's doing people's eyebrow, and he's doing a martial arts taunt four from SmackDown 2. This is, this Repeatedly. is dressed up Eric Bischoff. Like, he's this doing man sucked. <laughs> Fucking Glacier doesn't even hit the cry out of kick, man. It's fucking bullshit. Uh, well, there's a bunch of fucking confetti in the ring because they never there's fucking... Every five seconds I'm here because they're popping balloons in the crowd. Oh, yeah, yeah they are. <laughs> do, 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 do. God damn it, man. Uh, yeah, this match is garbage. Jimmy Hart gets on the apron. <laughs> Hugh Morris <laughs> accidentally hits him. Hugh Morris then gives Glacier a clothesline that turns him inside out. Rikishi style. Uh, and then hits the, of course, the no laughing matter moonsault. Of course he does. And he wins. And then he wins. Yeah, with his shaved ass head. Yeah, no sideburns, only beard, shaved head. They say he's got a new look and a new attitude. <laughs> Goofy ah, we, don't care. <laughs> <laughs> we do not care. <laughs> Folks, where's the live? <laughs> we do not care. So after this match, we go to the commentary booth. Larry Zabisco was looking around waiting for a pop that never came. He just 
stands dude. up anyway. He just stands up anyway. He, doesn't he give just a fuck. goes for. He's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, he just he looks around and he just fucking stands up and turns around and go. You still know Pop. <laughs> so for the people who don't know, uh, on every nitro that Larry Zabis goes on, he'll stand up from the booth when they go over because they go to the same shot after the first match usually every show. And Larry Zabisco yeah. will get a pop from the crowd and he'll stand up and he'll do the finger thing, bow, <laughs> and then thank the crowd as they're chanting his name. He was waiting for the 40k sold out yeah, Georgia no. Dome. <laughs> There's no way they could even see him. He was like an ant compared to all those people. Your time is up, brother. It's done. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, so no pop for Larry. It was very, Just very Just completely sad. ignoring Tony Schiavone. Oh, I guess fuck me then. <laughs> uh, so then we go to a pre-tape, which, by the way, boys, got to be one of the craziest fucking pre-tapes I've ever laid my eyes on. Dude, I, they might I, as well have just shown the whole show. <laughs> I, I genuinely was trying to follow this and it kept getting crazier and crazier and crazier. <laughs> Bischoff is in the limo with the boys. Yes. Ric Flair is in crazy jacket with the fur. <laughs> now Ric Flair is getting naked. Ric Flair now has a bunch of money ripping up $100 bills. <laughs> Not the death of 100 bucks. <laughs> Rick Flair is now in his underwear. Uh, he's he's a, a one piece of clothing away from being butt ass naked. He's cutting a promo. Rick Flair handcuffs himself to the ropes and says that he is going to stay in this ring butt ass naked until Eric Bischoff comes out here. And then Eric Bischoff comes out. That's, this is all. This is all true. This is exactly what happened. This is a very legendary promo, by the way. Yeah, this is an all timer Ric Flair promo. Yeah, yeah Ric Flair elbow drops in his, his boxers at one point. He does. He does. He does. He's yeah. going feral, man. He's fucking primal. Dude, I don't Ric know how Flair. his dick didn't come out of the dick hole of those boxers. You know, <laughs> because well, he was wearing them the right yeah, way. Was, stupid. Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. All right, no, shit, shit didn't out come out of his <laughs> shit hole. His. <laughs> No, he shit didn't come out of his shit hole. Yeah, you come have on, to man. initiate the He was wearing it the right way. No, bro. Whatever. How did Dick you? not come out the box? <laughs> Dude, that's what I was thinking. Because you know he wasn't wearing like whitey tighties under that. His dick's about to pop out of that Holy. Shit. Your schlong's just always flopping out of that thing? No, man. I don't wear Tony's those boxers. Got, Tony's got the real hammer. Oh, God, God damn, damn, man. Damn, Tony. No, I, know. I, I, I can't, I can't wear those. The, I gotta wear boxer you briefs. Always, uh, you're too fucking... Holy shit. You, I guys, can't wear the, you guys schmeet crazy? <laughs> I can't wear the regular boxers. You can't wear are those because of your fucking big ass cock? <laughs> it's just a, it's just a thing. I thought it was oh, like everybody. No, bro, you're different, Tony. You're different. You got that <laughs> tiny little pecker. Tony, you can't you win get this segment. Tony! <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah, keep that, it up, It had to be bro. one of us, right? God yeah, damn. Yeah, we should share some with the boys. Oh, That's awesome, shit. Tony. You never keep had it up. A problem? All right, whatever. God damn. Yeah, Tony, no, all the time I'm wearing my boxers and I'm like, whoa, my dick all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's why I can't wear boxers. I gotta wear the, yeah, briefs, the I wear briefs. I wear them the proper way. I don't gotta worry about my cock. Holy, that thing, you know. that's or crazy. Or my butthole. So, Shit. <laughs> butthole. <laughs> So Ric Flair says... What are we saying? Oh, yeah. He yeah. says he's going to sign his over his house, his cars, whatever money he has. He's going to sign it over to Bischoff if Bischoff can beat him one more time because Bischoff beat him at the pay-per-view, I think is what it was. Also, I want to I wanna reiterate, by the way, that... Oh, cool uh, cock, Tony! Yeah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the way these fuckers negotiate in wrestling, they're the dumbest fuckers I've ever seen in my life. I will give you all my money and my house and my children and my entire family if you just wrestle me. Alright, cool. We could have started That's low. wrestling. If you're, if you're not saying that shit, you Dude, don't wages. care. You could have started yeah, low, wages. man. You could have started low, man. Dude, the most exciting part of any sport is the wagers. Yeah, really. <laughs> if you're not putting something up, fuck you. Yeah, really. Alright, yeah. so Ric Flair says if he loses his career and dies tonight... It will be. I will die. I will die. <laughs> I pray to God if I lose my career and die tonight, it's gonna be with me having a piece of your ass in my hands. <laughs> they don't do promos like this no more, bro. That's exactly the type of fired up promo I'm trying to hear. They sold the hell yeah. out of this match. It's great. Um, now, okay, all right, here we go. So we're back to uh, whatever Dr. this is. Dr. Pepper. Uh, you got yeah. you got Bischoff. <laughs> First off, Bischoff is boxing with Mister Perfect. Um, Dr. Pepper says Ric Flair apparently didn't suffer from a mild cardial infarction. <laughs> he didn't <laughs> suffer from a mild well, cardial infarction. It was, of course, after an electrocardiogram. <laughs> a blood test. Because, <laughs> and he, he didn't suffer a cardio infarction. Dude, they didn't show anything about this. Like, Bischoff is like... <laughs> 
with Mr. Perfect, <laughs> and then Dr. Pepper says he did not suffer from a myocardial infarction. <laughs> His blood didn't have digitalis, which is extremely poisonous. <laughs> That's poisonous to the body. <laughs> of course it is. And then Eric Bischoff, it cuts back to Eric Bischoff, he says, no. No, that wasn't a yeah, real that- doctor. He's from Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> mean Gene says, you got a healthy Ric Flair, and someone said he was poisoned. Did they poison Ric Flair and just cut yeah, that out so, of the angle? No, yeah, that's what, so the whole thing was he had, he didn't have the infarction, he had toxins. <laughs> he had no <laughs> mild cardinal infarction? No he, mild cardinal infarction, but he does have digitalis. So the only bitch. way, <laughs> the only way Eric Bischoff could beat him is if he poisoned him, so that's how he won the match. Uh, they gave him a mild cardinal infarction. <laughs> he hit, he handed Ric Flair an apple and said, "Eat this." <laughs> that's, that's not even a real doctor. He's from Charlotte. Fuck this guy. He should have given him one of those gimmick burritos. You know. That been, yeah, Tony. Yeah, thank you. So. All right, so, so Ric Flair is now in the ring in his gear uh, for the oh, show. Mike, this is Michael Buffer introduces Flair as one of those legends. <laughs> Just one of them. One of many. Uh, Eric Bischoff says he's not fucking doing this match and he's going to get in his limousine and leave because I'm, you know, he's not going to face Ric Flair. It doesn't matter if he had a mild cardio infarction or not. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, Four Horsemen member Mongo McMichael is <laughs> in the limo. He's in there already and he pulls him out and of course there's Dean Malenko and Chris Benoit, the Four well, Horsemen. there? <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're camping the limo. What if Bischoff didn't come out right then? They were just going to sat there for three hours. Yeah, they probably had for. bottle service in the limo. Yeah, they maybe probably you're right. good. Mongo popping bottles. Mongo popping bottles. Pepe Michael getting slimmer off. <laughs> 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 little pop cup for Pepe and awesome. Michael. Uh, so they take him to the ring for the match. Uh, of course, the match is a clusterfuck. There's like a hundred things going on here. Mr. Perfect's here. The Giants here. Randy Savage. Every, the, yeah, every, Virgil and Horace Hogan trying to make this <laughs> Randy Savage <laughs> with Jinko Jeans and Chain Wallet is here. This is the craziest, <laughs> shirt. craziest Randy Savage look of all time, bro. Base Macho Man. This is the Macho Man that should have been in the goddamn video games. Chain Wallet, Jinko Jeans, glasses, <laughs> slip back, they- NWO shirt. Do they ever put what up Mach Macho Man in the games? Uh, Was it yeah, 2K14, the NWO? Yeah, he was in there. Oh, maybe okay, but not what up Mach with uh, no, Gorgeous George. No, that was no, no way, game. no way. The hell, they, they definitely weren't going to animate another character. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> Macho Man then nut taps the giant <laughs> <laughs> and then clotheslines him over the top rope. And now Ric Flair locks in the figure four, and Bischoff with the goatee gives up. Bischoff goatee and short hair is very strange look. And then Ric Flair then after the match is over drops an elbow on Eric Bischoff and pins him again. And Charles Robinson counts it. Counts it for the three. Tonight, when when uh, Flair had Bischoff in the figure four, Tanae had a great call. He said, listen to those bones snap. <laughs> it was awesome. And Bischoff is just like laying there. Yeah. He's just chilling. Yeah. So now we get the WCW Nitro dead, intro. Dead, dead, dead. <laughs> yeah, 17 minutes in, the show has started. Dude, Easy that's dub for up. Nitro. That's really fucked up. Well, we had to, you know, we had to have Gla- well, Glacier versus Hugh Morris. None of this was technically on Nitro yet. The intro hadn't started. So that's that's their giveaway for Glacier versus Hugh Morris. That did not happen on Nitro. Maybe it was just in Hugh Morris's contract that he has to win once a year. And this Who was, was the, it that we talked know? about that? Oh, it was Kinsuke, it was Kinsuke Sasaki. Oh. Where they had to film. Two- oh, did we talk about that or did I just? I was reading. I don't. About that. I think you talked about that to yourself. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry about that. Well, anyways, yeah, there was on. a time where Kinsuke Sasaki didn't want to drop the U.S. title or something, and what? like they filmed two matches, one where he won and one where he didn't, and then they just aired the one where he lost. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean he didn't want to lose it? He just he said want to drop the title. It? Yeah, he said I'm not dropping this fucking title right now. Oh, and then that's... they they filmed two matches, one where he won and one where they lost, and they didn't air one. <laughs> Oh my god, that's brilliant! Wow, yeah, that's awesome. Really. Um, but yeah, that reminded me of this. Sorry, that he more shit ain't working on this. I was thinking of the Kiss Demon, where Gene Simmons says he had to win <laughs> sometimes. He had a main event <laughs> match, match the right? He had to have a main oh, event. Yeah, match. He had to have a main event match, which they advertised as one of the many main events on this show. It was a main event stipulation. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's awesome. uh, so after the Nitro intro, Richard Flair has arrived to the arena. Oh my, Richard M. Flair, Dickum Flair is here with David Flair, Reed Flair, Charlotte Flair, and Arn Anderson Flair. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I couldn't believe this. Most of the time, you know, WWF would do where people arrive to the arena and then they would just cut from it and then come back. They literally <laughs> walked his ass from the limo outside into the arena through Gorilla to the ring. 
Dude, fans following him the whole time. One guy's holding a 420 sign the whole, <laughs> That's the awesome. whole way through. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, they had a lot of time to waste here because it was, as Tony said, not opposed. Uh, of course, the four horsemen are here with, of course, Mongo McMichael, who is also in the four horsemen. I just want to make sure everybody remembers that Mongo McMichael was in the four Of course, horsemen. you are. Him and Pepe, official member. Uh, mean Gene is here to interview Ric Flair. Uh, Did and, Flair get lost on the way to the ring? Because I feel like they show up like, and he they the camera's like showing Flair in a whole different part of the building. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, he probably there were probably no arrows on the ground, so he didn't know where to go. And yeah, you're right. We have that problem out. sometimes. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's tough. It's dark. Rick Flair is not butt ass naked this week. This is a very different Rick Flair than the one we just watched. <laughs> this is Richard. That's why. Yeah, you're right. Richard Flair, president <laughs> of WCW. Um, he comes to the ring and he basically just calls Bischoff to get his ass out here. Dean Malenko is injured, by the way. He's on crutches. Uh, he got hurt at a house show, they said. Ankle injury. What did they call it? They didn't say house show. It was an arena oh, show. Ar- arena event. Arena event. Them. Yes. <laughs> Which I, was cool. I think that is pretty cool. I agree. They could have yeah. just called it a spot show and called it a day, but... They should have. Dean Malenko got hurt the other day. Yeah, just, <laughs> just fucking fell off a cliff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> As have, he does. If you have no footage of it, you can just lie. Whatever, yeah. Uh, so Bischoff comes out here with his goatee. Um, <laughs> by the way, he, he Mongo does. McMichael out here in the most Bingles ass jacket I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it is gigantic. Dude, the shit just says players on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Only is one of them, goddammit. I, I, I think it's supposed to be like the Players Association, like a union uh, or okay. something, but it's sure, so yeah, funny sure. out of context. It's just Sports. players yeah, yeah. on the back of a jacket. That's awesome. Uh, Ric Flair says that he could tell Bischoff to pick up his last paycheck, but instead. He will work under Tony Schiavone in the booth. Oh, and he's going to cut his salary in half because he's not going to be visible on TV anymore. Uh, so, Mr. Schiavone, please get a headset for Mr. Bischoff and tell him, make sure he knows how to do play-by-play. <laughs> now, first off, the booth is on TV all the fucking time. That's Second what I was thinking. Thinking. That's what I thinking. <laughs> They showed him on TV at least 20 times during this episode, too. Right before the segment, they showed them. And I'm sure Tony Schiavone hated hearing that he is making half the pay of this fucking dude. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, yeah. But he has to go join the booth, and they kick Mike Tenay off the booth. Which okay, at first I was like, okay, it makes sense. They're gonna have four guys, you know, four guys talking is a lot. But Eric Bischoff does not talk for the next two hours. He doesn't he talk just until like, commentary. The, the Buff Bagwell the match, main. yeah, the Steiner yeah, yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. I like, I, I, I was very confused on why they couldn't just have him sit there and have Mike Tenay still call the goddamn matches. Easily could have, yes, they easily could have. But maybe I don't know. Mike Mike Tenay was making double what Tony Schiavone was, so that's why I can't get him off TV. <laughs> Iron Mike Tenay, we love you. <laughs> Based, dude. By the way, uh, they say that Eric Bischoff is not meant for this job. But if you watch Nitro, he's called the show many times. He used he to be had, like one of the main commentators for the show. Yeah, he was. I mean, for until he joins, even after he joins the NWO, he's still he's on the lead commentary. commentator, right? Yeah. yeah, he's the lead guy. I think, yeah, he right? was. Yeah. Yeah. So it shows footage of Eric Bischoff firing Randy Pee Wee Anderson, a referee who I believe they said was battling cancer. That is that is what they said. Now, I, I was leaving this for this part uh, from that observer I read earlier. Uh, the reason they keep showing the Randy Anderson stuff in the Bischoff video is because Anderson is ready to return to refereeing after his injuries. He was out with a neck injury. He did not have. He cancer. didn't have cancer. He did not. That was an angle. It was for simpy. cancer. It was K-fame for simpy. Cancer. You know, they got to get that simpy. Of course. Oh, man. Well, no sympathy K-fame for you. Kayfabe cancer is crazy. <laughs> Randy Pee Wee Anderson had his wife and kids there as they kayfabe cancer and got fired. Oh, got my. Fired. Yeah, so, they were crazy bastards, t- Tell man. your daddy to, to go home. He's fired. Yeah. Would you please tell your dad that he's still fired? Please, Mr. Bischoff. Could you get on with your life? <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. Dude, it's got all and Kevin Nash are there, too. They're just chilling. Ah, Dude, Scott Hall's yeah, doing ribs. He said the only one doing the job were the Steiners. I don't know what Scott <laughs> <laughs> talking about. I'm not even there. <laughs> he was just shitting on the Steiners for no reason. He said he had, he's like, you can't get a job. The only one doing jobs are the Steiners. <laughs> That's so beast, crazy. bro. Uh, so it shows that footage and then Ric Flair brings Randy Pee Wee Anderson out to the ring and then rehires him at double the salary. Yes. He, he says, I hope you'll accept your position back at double the salary. And usually when you, you become know, the president of a company, like you don't want to like try to save money the expenses <laughs> immediately, but I understand. I hear you. Well, maybe it was, you know, balanced out by him cutting Bischoff's salary. So he took the money he was 
paying Bischoff and gave it to Pee Wee on top of what he was making. Okay, all right. So does Mike Tanay still get paid even though he's not on the Mike show? Mike Tanay is off the show and he's not getting paid. <laughs> no, no. We have to save money here. You want to save money, don't you? <laughs> Damn it. Uh, uh, so, so I just I just saw this about Randy Anderson because uh, I was just looking up his Wikipedia. Okay. Randy he died, Anderson. He died of testicular cancer at the age of 36. So maybe he did have oh, cancer. Oh, he did have. Oh. But he probably was off TV because of the neck thing. You're probably okay. right. But, that makes more sense. But okay. I don't know. That's if, a lot. Sure. He died in 2002 because of the testicular cancer. So I don't know if. Well, that's hard. What happened. Rest in peace to sucks. Randy yeah. Pee Wee Anderson. I love when referees have nicknames like this Pee Wee Anderson. And I vividly remember Randy Anderson because he had the sweet mullet forever. Was yeah, he, he kept it the games? whole time he was in WCW. Was he in the. He uh, might have been in the WCW. In games, WCW yeah. World Tour. I think oh my he was God. The ref. Is he the little guy that pops up? Yeah, he is. That's oh, him. The, the, oh, oh, for the count. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Randy Pee Wee Anderson. Yeah, that guy's awesome, man. Seriously. Yeah. Uh, so okay, well, that's, that's a lot better. I'm glad it was not fucking... God damn, like, yeah. I, I guess that works Jesus. out. Yeah. Um, so Ric Flair also says that he is bringing Randy Savage back to WCW. Yes. I, we, you know, they've never seen eye to eye there. Him and yeah, no Randy more of the NWO shit. You're back in the yeah. WCW. Randy Savage he went said, back and forth with WCW and NWO forever. <laughs> I don't like it here. <laughs> or I do. <laughs> Uh, Flair said he wanted to thank DDP, Booker T, Shivani, and everyone else that came out the other night to make this possible. What the fuck did Shivani do? Well, you know, Shivani, if, if Shivani's not here to call the fucking show, this place I is guess not you're right. working. There's no show. Yeah. yeah. He's fucking pretty good at, at his job. I'll be honest. He's Tony tremendous. Shivani is. Yeah. I, 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 there's a point at some point in this show, I can't remember, I wrote a note about it, but like it was like, damn, this would like fall off the rails if Shivani wasn't keeping this here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. sure. Uh, Ric Flair then decides, of course, as any president would do, that he is booking himself in a is... handicap match at WCW, not NWO. WCW sold out. I'm booking myself in one of those gimmick matches. And Arn says, handicap match. <laughs> we used to call those gimmick matches. <laughs> yeah, handicap match with Barry Windham and Kurt Hennig. And Flair says, either I kill you or you kill me. <laughs> Okay. I like that all of them. Yeah, Ric Flair said, I'm pretty much ready to die at any point. Yeah, I would like to die, please. Uh, so David Flair then steps up and says, I want to be your partner, Dad. He says, shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> You're making the worst mistake of your life. <laughs> he says, uh, yeah, I want to be your partner. And Flair says, I love him. He's my son. But he's not ready for this. And then Arn steps up and he says, he knows what he's doing. Puts his hands in his pockets and nods. <laughs> the crowd goes crazy. Like, they oh, go shit. nuts for the enforcer. Oh, God, <laughs> yeah, enforcer gave him the nod. And Flair says, you and me? And David says, I'm ready. And Flair hugs him and says, all right. So Flair says, this is the greatest wrestling program in the world. Enjoy yourselves tonight. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Arn says, you know, whatever. And then David, this is, is this like the start of his It must be the start of his career, yeah. I wonder if that, is that his first match, you think? Yeah, is this probably. All, yeah, is this also the uh, start of the dissension of Ric Flair and Arn? Because I think they have like a little... Probably. Yeah, because Arn kind of stepped that, up and... <laughs> that Nitro with no wrestling for an hour and Arn Anderson and Ric Flair just arguing about David... Arguing, yeah, arguing about David Flair and how he doesn't know okay, what he's doing. Okay, so... Yeah. Uh, sorry, Tony. Yeah, that that is his first match. It's it's David and Ric Flair against Barry Windham and Kurt Henning. It's sold out and, and they go up. Uh, and then uh, David Flair's next match is the next night on Nitro... In a winner gains control of the company hair versus hair match <laughs> against Eric Bischoff, <laughs> and he wins. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, actually. Yeah, crazy. Uh, so Eric Bischoff gets on the announce table. He slouched over on the table. You he can does tell not care. He does not care about doing this yeah. shit. So. Um, so next up, we have Booker T versus Big White Man. <laughs> you did, how dare you, James? How dare you disrespect the name of Emery Hale? So apparently his name before WCW was Lord Humongous. <laughs> <laughs> Humongous what? Yeah, because no what? Way. He teamed with Test. What? Where? Uh, I don't remember. Maybe it was uh, World Wrestling Alliance, WBA. Uh, Test and Lord Humongous? Lord Humongous. I couldn't believe so, it. At first I wrote down Henry Hale until I wrote it <laughs> Dude, I wrote <laughs> down <laughs> Avery Hale. I had Henry Hale written down too. I was like, Henry Hale? There's no All way. Right, Booker T and Henry Hale here tonight. Uh, but yeah, this is just a Booker T showkase here. Um, I, I actually like Henry this. Hale, big son of a bitch. Though. Emery, Emery Hale. He's humongous, if you will. You, Lord <laughs> humongous, that Henry Hale. <laughs> so Booker T, yeah, for the most part in WCW, is uh, he's pretty protected. Not only is he protected, but he's 
pushed. He's on TV a lot with angles, and he's always yeah. he's, the story of Booker T actually has like a, a trajectory in WCW. It, he, he's got a cool like yeah. The, uh, I mean, I wish fucking WWE would do like you know like a uh, playlist of runs like that because Booker T's ascension in WCW, while you know it takes a minute for him to get the world title. But he's like, you know, his progression of him getting more and more over and just getting fucking better is actually super fun to watch. Uh, so Booker beats him with the top rope drop kick, which I thought was a fucking sweet finish, especially for the just time. Just a missile drop kick. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I didn't think that was going to be it, but I was like, oh, no way. Uh, Avery Hale is going to take it for that one. <laughs> uh, Booker T then looks at the camera afterwards and says he's not stopping till he is the number one contender. Um, very fucking easy story to understand for Booker reason for the match to happen. I feel like, like I, like I said, I feel like up until about maybe 2000, he's booked pretty well in WCW. Yeah, of course, is. They kind of stagnate once they get into 2000 and they start doing a lot of new blood and other stuff. And like, yeah. they start doing the, you know, the losing the T thing and all that Dude, stuff. The big like, T mystery <laughs> Booker theme. T thing was all, they hated all that. Yeah, also but, during this, they're trying to get Bischoff to commentate, by the way, and Shivani's saying, you know, let's let bygones be bygones and do the damn job. And he's not. He's not doing the job. And uh, Booker T, during his entrance, by the way, he says he's going to mess up this sucker OG style. <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he says that at the end, too. I'm not stopping until I get a title shot in this sucker OGB, baby. I said, oh, shit, OGB. That's huh? awesome, dude. Booker yeah. is fucking sweet, dude. This is, I, is I sweet. fucking love WCW Booker. Everything we've ever seen from him is like, like, oh, this sweet. is awesome. And I loved it. I love that it did we didn't need a promo or we didn't need a backstage or we didn't need anything. Booker just literally looked at the camera at the end and told his fucking story. Yeah, I want the title shot. That's why I'm wrestling here. Fucking okay. Perfect. You know, and then we'll <laughs> yeah, move on easy. to the next thing. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh next up we have Norman Smiley versus Chavo Guerrero Jr. Uh they, uh, they did the Nitro Girls spot uh, in between these, by the way. There's a lot, like, especially three-hour Nitro. There's, like, five Nitro Girls segments on these shows. These girls are getting paid more than Eric Bishop. Actually, you know, <laughs> it's funny. We talked about it before we really started diving more into, like, a lot of the WCW stuff. But I actually think the Nitro Girls things were pretty well, like, positioned on the show. Yeah, it's actually, it's not, um... First, I guess maybe growing up because I, you know, little shitty Johnny just wanted to see Goldberg, you know, yeah, in sure. the hardcore division and Reno. Uh, <laughs> Reno <laughs> with the hair, yeah, Reno with side hair. <laughs> um, you know that I, you know, any in between stuff that interrupted the wrestling, I didn't enjoy. Same with like commercials or anything. But yeah, like you said, going back and looking at it, the Nitro Girls, you know, they they just the Nitro Girls are doing their shit. It's like choreographed, just yeah. fucking dances to cool music, and they're they change outfits every time, and they just say, all right, you know, and up next. Tonight, and then this weekend, this happened, and Dean is going to get hurt this weekend, and you can come out and watch it. Yeah, before they like before they did like that kind of stuff, they would do like these breaks with the booth where they kind of just stay on the booth and look at the booth while they're like yeah. explaining what's happened so far tonight, what's happening later tonight, what's the big story for tonight, all that kind of stuff. They try to yeah. do that like every you know half hour or so, and like. The Nitro Girls were just there, so they didn't have to look at the booth the whole time. And I, yeah, you know, I, I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, they were just wrestling the version of Laker Girls. That's all they were, which was pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, it was a good NWO idea. Lakers? No, NWO, not the NWO Nitro Lakers. Girl Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> that's not until later. <laughs> well, David Flair is going to turn into a beast. Gaines muscle. Oh, God, damn. <laughs> Gaines muscles. Damn. <laughs> so Norman Smiley versus Chavo Guerrero Jr. is up next. Singles With Pepe, action, not Pepe the dog. Pepe the horse. Pepe the- Pepe the horse. Pepe the yes. dog. If he was riding Pepe the dog, that would be the most insane thing ever. <laughs> that would be insane. LWO Pepe McMichael. Say it ain't so. <laughs> so Tony Schiavone asked Eric Bischoff to tell us what Norman Smiley has been up to in Japan. <laughs> Eric doesn't answer. He just, and then he says, I never thought I'd say I miss Mike today, but I miss Mike today. You need Mike, Mike today. Mike would have added a lot here. Yeah, yeah. he, he would have told you all about the Japan run. This is slowly beginning to wiggle Norman Smiley, by the way. Dude, I wish, I'll be honest with you, I wish Norman Smiley stayed just like this his whole fucking run in this WCW. Is cool. He is a fucking machine. This match, for whatever reason, was fire as fuck. When I He's heard Norman, big. dude, yeah, I heard Norman Smiley versus Chavo Guerrero Jr. I said, damn, I don't know, I don't know about this one. But yeah. God damn, they were yeah, working. They were, I, I thought this was fire. Yeah, this was good. So we start the match off here. Chavo hits a drop kick to Norman. He goes to the outside and like Norman takes this fucking bump to the outside. I'm like, dude, this is like peak Norman. Like he's so <laughs> he is, good here. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. I wonder how old he is here, you think? I don't know. He always looked the same age. Still probably to he this day. He still looks like this. Yeah, still looks the same age. Um, so then Chavo gets Pepe the horse and then rides him around the ring. <laughs> Got to get that in there. 
Dude, Norman does the smooth sail and body fucking slam. I thought that was so, so sick. It looks great. Um, Norman hits the world's strongest slam for a two. Uh, Norman transitions into a leg lock from the pin. So Chavo kicks out. He leg locks back into a pin. Like, Norman is, dude, he's awesome. I wrote that down, and then my next sentence was, these boys are working. <laughs> yes, dude, this is fire. Uh, they also show a, a camera shot from the perspective of Pepe the Horse <laughs> and watching the match. From well, the this corner. is probably, this is the last perspective before Pepe the Horse dies. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't want to talk about that. Uh, so Chavo reverses with a victory roll for a two. Norman Smiley then back elbows the dog shit out of Chavo, man. Cleans Tells him to clock. get your shit together, bitch. Yeah. We got to get this match back. Front missile from Norman. He backs, he back rolls up off the ground and starts wiggling. <laughs> he, start, he starts doing the big wiggle long enough for Chavo to go to the top rope and hit the move that Booker just won with. <laughs> Chavo then punches Norman and then Norman walks to the middle flare style and does the wiggle and back box. And then, and then bumps. Yeah. <laughs> this tremendous. is fire, man. They're cooking here. Uh, Chavo falls off the ropes and then recovers by doing a spear pin, which I thought was actually a fucking fantastic yeah, way that to recover cool. off that. Um, Chavo's a little lost here, so then Norman back elbows the dog shit out of him yeah. and gets a submission <laughs> in. <laughs> Crossface, yeah, chicken uh, wing. But Chavo reverses into a flash pin and gets a three. Just a fun fucking match. They didn't have a lot of time, but it was, I mean, it was way better than the Hugh Morris match. No, this <laughs> was awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Norman then attacks him afterwards and does a wiggle brain buster. <laughs> 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 He said he gets him locked up for it. He just starts gyrating and then just picks him up and drops him on his fucking head. Then he picks him up again, hits the smooth sail and body slam, then walks over, grabs Pepe the horse and throws it on Chavo. And I said, breaks oh, that's the horse. <laughs> he, he throws it on him, picks it back up, starts smacking Chavo with it. And Pepe the horse's fucking head falls off. Oh, I said, no, 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 man. Children are watching this show. God damn it. You can't do this. Dude, the fucking wiggle brain buster. I was like, <laughs> I was like, man, it, I can't believe like he wasn't like an upper card fucking like, you know what I'm saying? Like, He's obviously fun as hell. the WCW hardcore stuff was really well received. And a lot of people. Yeah. At the time, and it got him super over. And really, at the end of the day, whatever gets you super over is what is works. He you probably know? made a lot more money doing that bullshit. And it, it probably, it probably you, was a lot less hard on him. Yeah. 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 But goddamn, Norman was cooking, fucking wiggle brain buster, that smooth was sailing. Yeah, man. He was looking good here. Like, this is like peak <laughs> physicality, like athletic Norman Smiley. Yeah, it's dope. Uh, and then next up, we have. Oh no. Horace Hogan versus Chris <laughs> Benoit. <laughs> this is dude, this is probably the best Horace Hogan match ever, right? Yeah, dude. I wrote down holy <laughs> shit. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, this, man. I, I can't believe it. I mean, Horace Hogan comes out here, ball liquor supreme with the Hogan. Now, hold on belt. a minute, bro. Come on, dude. That's his belt, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Horace Beals Benoit out of the corner. He throws a clothesline. Benoit hits him with the rolling Germans. I'm like, oh shit, okay, they're kind of doing some shit. They are. I was surprised. Uh, I said this Shivani's, is a good hour of Nitro. I dude, I was I was impressed. Shivani was like, uh, Shivani says, you know, I don't I don't gotta talk to you, uh, Bischoff. I'll, I'll just tell Mister Flair about it and he'll punish you. And uh, Zabisco says, I'll make him do the internationals. <laughs> 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 yeah, he goes, you gotta have some comments for one of Hogan's nephews, Bischoff. He sits there and Tony Shivani goes. Nothing. <laughs> Fuck you then, man. <laughs> uh, Horace reverses a suplex and suplexes Benoit to the floor over the top, this which I was like, holy up. shit. The then Horace Hogan hits a fucking suicide dive on Benoit. I Torpedo said, suicida. That shit was so fire, man. I've I said, never seen. I said, what the fuck? He was so like vicious. It was precision. Yeah, yeah, man. That was dope, bro. I couldn't dude, believe Benoit, yeah. this Benoil, like clips the edge of the guardrail. I thought he was going to get fucked yeah. up off that thing. It was awesome. I was like, holy shit. Ball liquor over here is doing all right. Going crazy, bad. man. Cock muncher supreme going nuts <laughs> over here, man. <laughs> Horace hits a big running elbow on Benoit. Gets a two count off of Benoit. Wow, that's also a crazy sentence. Uh, Shivani says, uh, you know, Pee Wee is back refereeing this match, Bischoff. You can see it on your monitor over here. And Zabisco says, how could you fire the man that he had, when he had cancer, you idiot? <laughs> <laughs> he says nothing. He says, oh, you can answer him if you like. Uh, Benoit hits a superplex off the top, does the cutthroat taunt, big diving headbutt. Uh, not the finish of the match somehow. I was like, oh, I thought he was going to win with that. No. 
Uh, he's they got the belt on, up. dude. That's not the end of the match, bro. <laughs> Benoit counters Horace's suplex attempt into the fucking crossface, which I love that counter. He just snaps Me the too. arm and brings you down. Very fucking cool. Very looking. hard. He fucking, yeah, yeah. you got to go, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, gets him in the cross face and gets the win. And then the uh, what do you think of that power slam shoulder breaker or Zoga style? Oh, that's right. <laughs> he did do that. I mean, who's, who's, I was, someone else's finish was that at the time. I just that was remember. the Rock's finish. Oh my God! It was my Via's fucking finish. Yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Holy oh, shit! Give me that. Yeah, he said, I'll take that. <laughs> I got a five star. You don't. Dude. He's also doing the people's eyebrow. <laughs> Everybody was apparently. Yeah. Uh, Benoit throws up the four horseman sign and then headbutts the camera. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. <laughs> I think uh, also just a note. I think this match was like the start of the second hour of Nitro or oh, okay. it, well, it was uh, like so, it was at like forty some minutes. So maybe commercials. It was the start of the sure, second hour okay. or whatever. So this is where things so, start get cooking. The first time you see Goldberg is when Raw's on. Yes, exactly. Ah, That's right. Ah, that makes sense. Well, guess what? Randy Pee Wee Anderson was in great position <laughs> in Benoit won the match. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of Goldberg, yes, now it's time for the running angle for the evening, uh, which starts with a pre-tape with Goldberg being told by the police that they have a warrant for his arrest. There's 40,000 people here that want to see Goldberg. <laughs> they can watch him on the monitor. <laughs> great. <laughs> well, yeah, a cop, one, there's a bunch of cops here. And the cop says, Goldberg, we have, uh, Mr. Goldberg, Mr. Bill, we have a warrant for your arrest. And Goldberg said, you kidding me? And the cop says, no. <laughs> yeah, what? Goldberg no, says, man. Why would we? <laughs> Goldberg just yeah, adds a rib. Goldberg says, whoever charged me with whatever it is, you know, Jack knows. Jack is one of the other cops. He's one of Goldberg's his friends. He's his bud. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, he says, everyone in the city knows that I do nothing but positive things for this community. I do things for kids. I do things for fallen cops. And nobody here can take me in for anything I didn't do. I don't care, because whatever it is, I'm innocent. The cops start to surround him. Now, Goldberg is very adamant that no one is taking him to jail here. He says, none of you can take me downtown. Not any of you or all of you. I don't like being accused. It's bogus, and it's not true. And they all st awkwardly stare at each other, all just kind of silent, looking at each other. And the first cop says, well, Goldberg, I have an arrest I have warrant an arrest. I have a warrant for your arrest. <laughs> <laughs> and you're Goldberg, under arrest. You're under arrest. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. <laughs> and Goldberg says, every gun you got, every piece of mace, oh. every piece of mace, <laughs> all the pieces. All your pizza mace <laughs> that you can use on me. He says every it's piece of weapon, every, weaponry or whatever. Every piece of weaponry <laughs> to take me down. Are you ready to do that? I stand for good in this community, and no one can tell me otherwise. And he's staring them all that down. That sounds like a very, very <laughs> guilty man. <laughs> I don't like being wrong and accused. I'm not wrong. I didn't do I, it. He's screaming in this hallway. Not a single cop is saying anything else. He says no one can tell me otherwise. Everyone's quiet. He's staring them all down again, and cop number one says, okay, you're still going to jail. We have a warrant for your arrest, and you're under arrest. <laughs> and Goldberg says, Jack, you know it's not true. And Jack says, Co just go on, bro, just go to the precinct. Just man. chill, bro, Come just on. calm down. Just go to the precinct, no, bro. Maybe Goldberg use says, the My pizza mace, please, <laughs> I'll Bill. use pizza weaponry right now. I will do it. Goldberg says, my reputation is on the line. We're talking defamation of character, Jack. You know me, dude. <laughs> Brother Jack. Daddy. <laughs> and Jack says, okay, just, why don't you just come to the precinct? <laughs> <laughs> please. Please. Come on, man. You have, just, this segment was supposed to be 60 seconds long. <laughs> just come to the precinct. It's just, definitely Goldberg's fault that this is still going on. Just go down to the station. On. We'll figure this out. We'll talk about it. Come on, man. No. <laughs> I don't I like do being it. wrongly accused. I stand for good in this community. One of the, one of the cops just one of the cops just goes, "Hezo, hezo, come on, kid, we got it." <laughs> Dude, I couldn't believe at the very beginning of this, Goldberg. They go, "You have you have a warrant for your arrest?" No, I do a lot of good stuff for the kids in the city and for the fallen cops. I, I'm innocent. Yeah, we, like are, a we, we, spot. we got a warrant for your arrest. <laughs> No, the cops weren't told any other lines. Line, we didn't know Goldberg was gonna keep talking. NPC cops, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And uh, Goldberg punches the wall and says, "Damn," <laughs> which also seems very guilty. You are under arrest for fucking punching the wall. <laughs> you fuck yeah. You're uh, Jack says, "Put your hands behind your back," and Goldberg says, "This makes me look guilty." Jack says, "Listen, man, that sounds like something a guilty guy says. This makes me look guilty." Just. 
Put your hand. I'm only telling you one more time. Put your hands behind your back. We're going to get this all straightened out. And Goldberg says, all right, you do your job. I'll be vindicated. You do what you got to do. This is wrong. This is wrong. <laughs> this is wrong. Where is the Miranda rights for Goldberg? <laughs> Please remember two minutes ago where Goldberg says, you cannot do anything to take me to jail right now. He says, all right, you do what you got to do. You better use your gun on me because I'll you, Dude, he said, that's what he said. He said, you have to kill it's going to take all your fucking guns, all your fucking mace. Are you ready to use that? Yeah. Because I am. Yeah. Now you're yeah, going to yeah. shoot the cop. <laughs> that's, a, that's a guilty man, Goldberg. Did, did we ever talk about, was it Law and Order that Goldberg SVU. was on? Yeah, so Goldberg was on Law and Order, and he plays uh he plays a criminal who's on crack, who's not he's, guilty. <laughs> he was he's, on crack. <laughs> he was on crack, and he's a, he's in handcuffs in the precinct on crack, and he starts fucking losing his mind, which is what I was hoping were, would happen. Yeah, he here. says, he like, "I do nothing good for this community. No one can take me in for anything. You're gonna have to use yeah, every single starts, piece of he, pizza weaponry on me. <laughs> pizza weaponry, gun, pizza mace. Y'all are gonna get yeah, to kill me." In law, law and Order, he's breaking tables and smashing shit. He's Throwing cops through glass. Throw, like, throwing the chair. I'll never forget that episode. Yeah. Throwing the chair uh, through the glass. The yeah. yeah. When I was like in my early 20s, I remember I was like speed running all the SVU episodes. The fucking Goldberg would call me so off guard. Oh my God. Fucking throws the chair through this it's thing. Awesome. Bits in a stabler. Like, what the fuck is going on? I got iced tea in there going, hey, yo, what the fuck? Goldberg's on crack. Help. <laughs> <laughs> Shit was awesome, man. God damn. Yeah. So uh, Goldberg's going to jail. Goldberg's not at the Georgia Dome. Uh, at forty thousand people, Goldberg's not at the Georgia Dome. That's what you he's, guys know. No, about. he's not there. And uh, we go to the next segment here, and we come back for commercial. The cops are escorting Goldberg outside. It's very windy. They put fucking Goldberg in a, a fucking green hoopty car. <laughs> Got him in a Monte Carlo <laughs> town car. It's an unmarked car. They just put Goldberg in no it lights. and say, "You're going to jail." <laughs> Kevin Nash comes out here, backwards hat, red NWO tank top, and, and his gear. He's like, what's going on? Come on. Also, uh, when they were taking him, I don't know if you guys noticed, he walked, they walked right past Hogan as they were going. Oh, did, well, Hogan's in the part here. Oh, wait, you see him before you see him at yeah, the end Yeah, when they're walking out, they, they I didn't pass, notice. like Hogan's entering the building and he's leaving, getting arrested. Are we supposed to see that? Uh, it was just like a quick shot. I don't a know. Subtle? Uh, yeah, so maybe, okay, like, I well, see. you know, Hogan's just getting there or whatever, so whatever. I think it's even funnier if it wasn't meant to happen. Yeah, <laughs> just just Hogan actually you know. just showed up then. <laughs> Whoa, dude, what are you uh, doing? <laughs> Yeah, Nash says, what's going on? Come on. And then he turns away and he says, this is funny to you? I said, who the fuck is he talking to? And it pans over. It is a man with a blonde goatee, also black goatee, bandana, black, glasses, black, shirt, black, pants, black, suit jacket, black. It's Hollywood all go, your brother. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I do think it's funny, brother. Yeah, I think it's funny, dude, because I'm a law and order politician, dude, and I believe in a man doing his time if he's guilty, and he's guilty. <laughs> they were framing this for his election run. I'm just happy to see a man doing time. I'm dude. If he's guilty, brother, he's going to jail, dude. He's guilty. I don't care if he's got pizza or not. <laughs> Somebody we say didn't pizza, serve brother. that at Pasta Mania House, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you asked for pizza at, with the whole Caruso. Got that brother. pizza. I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. Way, get that pizza, <laughs> the we got that marinara sandwich. Yeah, pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Nash says, "Oh, that's real funny." And Hogan goes back into the building and says, "Oh, well, your vote would be appreciated. Thank you." <laughs> <laughs> and as it goes by Hogan walking into the building, it also shows Miss Elizabeth talking to two detectives. Oh, my. Oh. All right. So, you know, you think in your head, okay, 40K, Georgia Dome, big Goldberg spot. Obviously, he's going to come back at the end, and he's going to be the Superman. And he's, he's going to win the belt. <laughs> all Against all odds, right? against all cops, against all weaponry and pizza. Right, right. He's going to come back for his of match. Of course. Well... Anyways, we'll talk about it. Well, of course he does, James. Yeah, well, he comes back. He does come back. He does so come back. That's fine. true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Perry Saturn versus Chris Jericho is up next. Perry Saturn is begging to get out of here. <laughs> this is a crazy outfit. <laughs> he looks great. Shawn Michaels, eat your heart out. Perry Saturn's out here looking Dude, crazy as hell. Backwards, red bandana, chain vest, full red tights. I feel like I've never, ever seen him wear this ever. This, Speaking of never seen him wear this, Jericho's outfit I've never seen him wear either, like maroon metallic fucking tights. I was like, oh, yeah, with a gray jacket and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, yeah, Chris Chris Jericho's out here got Ralphus and his best WCW theme song, of course. Everyone loves this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. You know I got break you. the walls, yeah. damn. Did, God, No, break dude, the walls. We, we were watching fucking WCW with Hunter Rayner, who has not watched any WCW, and Jericho comes out, and he's like, oh, you use this here? I said, no, Yes, Hunter he did. Rayner. That was his best no. one. God That's true. damn you, man. <laughs> Perry Saturn and Jericho in the ring, and Perry's, it shows a shot of Perry Saturn, and Deb says, you're telling me that's not Horace Hogan? <laughs> <laughs> no. Elizabeth, Miss Elizabeth also thinks that later, but we'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, there is seven dudes in the crowd on hard cam with their shirts off and Jericho <laughs> written on their chest. Oh, my God. That's awesome. J-E-R-I-C-H-O. There's a ton of redneck world order signs as well. Yeah, Georgia, Georgia, big WCF. This is actually where their headquarters were at. Yeah, we're going to fucking, we're going to make you guys not come next yeah, time. Yeah, we're going to make sure we kill this town. <laughs> so Jericho <laughs> takes a belly to belly. Look good here. Jericho does the triangle drop kick off the top rope, which is yeah. cool. And it also reminded me that WCW always had one guy standing on the apron for the roamer. Yes. Was it on the box, right? Yeah, they had a box so he, he wouldn't fall down or anything. And, Which is but very for smart. here, I didn't see the box. I just saw no him box. on the... But it oh, could have been, but he was standing raw, on the apron. That's why Jericho was like, dog move, in, bitch. Raw, raw dog in the roamer. All right. Yeah, it's pretty dangerous, but it looked great. I always loved how the roamer it looked like great. they were in the ring. I like that. Yeah, that was cool. Perry Saturn looks for the DVD, but settles for an exploder suplex that looked fantastic. It was fucking dope. Uh, Saturn, uh, on commentary, Shivani says, terrific move from Saturn, Bischoff. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> and he doesn't. Say that. <laughs> Perry Saturn Manhattan drops Chris Jericho, and as he gets the Manhattan drop, Jericho slaps the referee and then pulls him in front of Saturn doing a springboard, and Perry Saturn lands on the ref, and the ref is down. <laughs> Just kills him, yeah. And I guess this is when I realized that the referee is Scott Dickinson and they've been doing an angle where Perry Saturn has been attacking Scott Dickinson for weeks. Leave him alone. <laughs> By the way, I don't, did you notice when Saturn picked up Jericho for the Death Valley? There was a big pop. Like, they were like, yeah, of course. That's been his excited move. for Saturn's move. <laughs> it was shit. Like we talked about, Saturn's been on TV and angles and like he's been for around a while, for yeah. a while. And like that was always his kill move. And yeah, you know, yeah. Fuck. I mean, people were over in WCW. I know, I yeah. know that people have told you they aren't. But <laughs> people don't believe that. Yeah, yeah. they are. Uh, Jericho, oh, by the way, that also reminds me how over finishers were in general back then. Yes, yes. Oh, my. You could see the crowd come up when, like, you were even go like, teasing that you were going for a move. Yeah, your finish was, like, the, the crowd always popped, no matter what, for your finish. No matter what, who you yeah. were or whatever the case. And, like, I feel like that's kind of gotten lost. But I, I, yeah. I love the pops for the finishers. It's always cool. Absolutely. Uh, Jericho low blows Perry Saturn, then lion salts him and gets a lion tamer in. The ref gets yeah, back up and calls for the bell. He punts him in his balls. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> straight up kicks him in his sack. Lion tamer. Yeah, the referee calls for the bell and then raises Jericho's hand. Jericho wins. Perry Saturn is not happy about this because he gets up on the ring. And he yells, no, I <laughs> no! didn't give up. No. <laughs> I love the way his mouth looked when he was yelling. No. no! Yeah, very squished. Uh, so now we go back to a pre-tape. Goldberg has been taken to the precinct, which they say. And I thought, because I remember thinking this was stupid back then. Shivani on commentary says the precinct is across the street from the building. I want you to remember this for later on. Uh, so they take Goldberg in. Jack says, oh, we'll take you to, to room three and let you know what's going on. And they take him in there to sit Goldberg down in the squeakiest chair they could have possibly picked for this segment. <laughs> and the co uh, cop number one says, Mr. Goldberg, you're under arrest for aggravated stalking. And Goldberg says, this is a joke. No, dude, it's no joke, Goldberg. Why do you keep asking if <laughs> this laughing is a fucking joke? No. He was on the, the show. The cop says, Elizabeth Lebetsky filed charges against you. And Goldberg says, Ooh! first of all, I'm not capable of anything like that. Second of all, I don't even know who that is. And Jack says, Bill, it's Miss Elizabeth. <laughs> and then Goldberg's shirt goes, wee, 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 wee. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Shivani, Shivani comes out right away. Oh, I know who that is. Like immediately. Yeah, I know who that is. Yeah, he goes, well, I do. Why you say like, why you say like that, Johnny? <laughs> Jack says, listen, we're going to sit here and talk to you. The detectives are going to talk to her and figure out what's going on. And Goldberg says, Jack, you know me. This ain't me. Jack says, we're, we got to Let us do our fucking job. And Goldberg says, all right, go do your job. Squeak, squeak. That wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> I am not guilty. All right, you need to stop saying that. <laughs> I didn't do it. I do things for children and dead uh, cops. Uh, uh, Come on, uh, bro. Uh, okay, big man. You do stuff for children. <laughs> I'm going to need you to stop right there. You just shut up real quick. <laughs> Uh, so now we get a commercial. I can't believe they actually kept this in. 
Um, yeah. Get your 15 month Nitro Girls calendar. <laughs> All the months of the year, all 15 of them. That's awesome. So this was $15 cool. plus five ninety five shipping and handling. It was a hype video for it. Yeah, you know, Nitro Girls tell you get that gallon. You got to mail in your mail-in order sure. and get that gallon. <laughs> I bet you that yeah, took yeah. forever to get to your house, by the way. You buy, oh, my God. They, they gave because, you 15 I mean, months because it gets there three months after you order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, was no, there was no way they said you little weirdo you're not getting this for a minute we uh, should do a calendar of tony with the uh in the boxers holy shit them. yeah schmeat pack and tony yeah so- <laughs> i'm not even listening to you at all <laughs> so by the way uh i looked it up uh it was Did you so, look up this calendar? No, no. I, I oh, looked okay. up, I wanted to know how much that would be nowadays for this oh, calendar. Okay. So, yeah, sure. Twenty dollars and ninety five cent in nineteen ninety nine has the same purchasing power now in twenty twenty two as thirty four dollars and eighty five cent. Wow. So that that calendar would be thirty four eighty five, pretty much thirty five dollars with shipping if you were to get it today. So almost forty dollars total. Yeah, to get this calendar. Oh, and then you would get it late. Three months late. So you got your 12 month <laughs> calendar, so you're good. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. I'll get it eventually. So we go to wow. the WCW Nitro Party, and they have the craziest thing I've ever seen. Is this even a product, or do they make I, this? I think they made this, is what I think. This was, was yeah. based. Howard is the ultimate <laughs> WCW fan. <laughs> they, they made a WCW NWO thumb wrestling ring. It it was like a it looked like a paper ring. Yeah, it was like cardboard or hole. paper or something. Yeah. Yeah, there was a hole in the middle of the ring. Crazy Tony, don't you think about that? Two. There was two holes, one for each thumb, I think. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Fucking, uh, I wouldn't have been able to get through that. Thing. No, I don't uh, think I could either. <laughs> Tony on the other hand would obliterate it. <laughs> or me, dig dog. Dude. <laughs> Get back to the fucking show! <laughs> so the thumb wrestling in this thing, Howard and his brother. Oh, or, or is it Kevin and Johnny? I think it who it was. I don't think it was Howard. I Marty. think it was Kevin. <laughs> Marcus. Marty and Tony. was there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then they break the ring over each other's heads, and they're just and they show a shot of everybody there. It's just drunk dudes yelling and squishing each other. Uh, the interviewer guy says, "What's what's been the best part of the show so far?" And the guy yells, "Free Goldberg! <laughs> <laughs> Get him out of jail! Get him out of jail!" <laughs> then he goes and asks another guy who's in a wolf pack shirt, and he says, "What's your favorite part?" And the guy says, "When Goldberg went to jail, keep him there." <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, and it does a wide keep shot of the arena. And keep them there. It does a wide shot of the arena. You can hear the people, guys, in this suite chanting "Jailbreak, jailbreak." <laughs> Dude, free Crazy. Goldberg, no justice, no peace. Come on, guys, get out of jail. <laughs> free Goldberg to us backwards. <laughs> so now we have a pre-tape. Uh, Miss Elizabeth is talking to the cops. I feel like it's been an hour since the match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, she says that Goldberg is following her everywhere. <laughs> yeah, dude, the it, way she explained this is insane. Yeah, she, uh, she's they the so it's two it's two detectives talking to her and he says, "When was the last time he confronted you?" And Liz says, "Well, it was a few moments ago by the water cooler." Uh, and the, the, the detective number two comes in. He says, is there any other info you can give us to nail down this suspect? And Liz says, listen, I filed three reports already. Have you read them? He follows me everywhere. The guy says, what do you mean <laughs> by everywhere, ma'am? And she says, well, you know, at Nitro in Baltimore, he was there. And at the, the pay-per-view, he was there. He's at every hotel I'm at, every arena. I walk down the hall, he's there. He's following me. I go to the gym, he's there. He's behind me. He's always there. And they said, you feel threatened? He said, of course I did. He said, all right, well, let's take a moment and we'll go talk about this. Liz is accusing Goldberg of doing his job. He's coming to work. He comes to work every day. What the Long hot time. Damn, dude. <laughs> that is so crazy. He's at the same nitros as me and same thunders and same Marriott's and he's at the same hotels gyms. were booked at. Yeah. <laughs> the cops are just like, okay. The gym part is even crazier later. Oh yeah, yeah, they come back to it. So we get a pre-tape. Eddie and the LWO are out chilling. 
like this feels like a YouTube video. How long this was? <laughs> like there was, this is, didn't feel like it was supposed to be on TV. No, like, they were supposed to cut this in half or something. LWO and the Lowriders with the Mamacitas and the Cervezas. I think they were all there. L- Lowrider Willie. <laughs> <laughs> Mamacitas and Cervezas is right, bro. They had them all out there. They're going crazy. <laughs> yeah, Spider there with his ride. Isn't that you know sweet <laughs> Spider? Up, man. No, don't forget about El Dandy. He was there. El Dandy was. El Dandy was there. Psychosis. La Parka. La Parka in mass, but in tank top tucked in. <laughs> It's a crazy look. That's awesome. They are about to go back inside the party, but Eddie stops and he turns around to El Dandy and he says, Hey, can you not you can go park all those cars, please? <laughs> so El Dandy's getting fucked around here. He's the bitch boy uh, of the group. La Parca's inside dancing with the ladies. Mama Cita's awesome. with La Parca. Yeah. He does the fucking chair thing. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Eddie says, didn't I tell you Eddie and the LWO can throw a party? LaPark is going fucking crazy. He takes off some dude's hat and says, yo, Tex, come with me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he does. <laughs> and he goes with him. Eddie's on the couch with all the ladies at one point. On the opposite couch is all the rest of the members of the LWO. <laughs> That's like Tony over there with all the ladies and we're on the other side of the couch just sitting like, damn. At the boy-girl party. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, did you did we talk about this? Did you did you ever submit a nitro tape? I never did. No, we never had nitro oh, okay. parties. Just pay per view oh, parties, right. you know. But sorry. Uh, yeah. So Eddie says, you know, Eddie Guerrero is on top of the Latino world. He said, if I can promise these vatos the world, don't you think I give it to you? He's talking to the ladies, of course. He said, who's the man? Who is the vato loco? Who's the homie? <laughs> Who the is homie? the homie? <laughs> Eddie is. <laughs> Eddie. <laughs> Uh, they show all the boys playing cards with the ladies, and Eddie comes in, and he says, Hey, come on, more money, you know, the respect you deserve, and now beautiful women around you? Show me some gratitude. Go get me a soda. <laughs> he said, ladies, you want a soda, too? Ladies want a soda, too. He said, El Dandy, show us, gentlemen, you are the homes, and help Damien with the sodas. <laughs> So he steals Damien's seat. He steals Damien's cards. He starts playing, and then he gets a full house and takes all the money. <laughs> Crazy son of a bitch, says Eddie Guerrero. Then Psychosis is talking to El Dandy, and uh, I think it might have been um, who the fuck else was out? Silver King. Silver maybe? King was think, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just them talking, probably talking shit about Eddie. No way, he's the homie. <laughs> well, I don't know if they're too happy with Eddie right here. Uh, they go back outside. Eddie says, "I got one thing to say. It's not about you, Dandy, or you, Silver King, or you, Damien. It's about the whole world. It's about the LWO. It's time for you to respect the LWO." And this was long as fuck. This segment, god damn, it was very long, but I also enjoyed it, so I'll take it. There was fun stuff about it, yes, yeah, but absolutely. it's just I was like, holy shit, I'll man. never they could have cut this up. LWO La Parca fucking hitting the that dance was, with the Mamacitas. He's having a good awesome. time, man. That was awesome. This felt like they filmed it and it was meant to be like cut up throughout the show. Yeah, yeah like a multi part on one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they always Which probably, probably would have been better. They always respected yeah. the Latino world order and stuff. They always did the, the the cool shit with them. I liked it. It was different than uh, what most a crazy of stuff. group. Yeah, yeah awesome. they, like you would never see this in WWE. They would never do anything like that in WWE. It was like. No. completely different than I thought well they awesome. I mean the, you know they had a bunch of fucking people from Mexico on the show you know so it's like yeah. they've been building this forever so why not um, yeah it's awesome yeah I thought that was really cool and you know Eddie is a fucking great guy to spearhead this yeah what a, like what a unbelievable amount of fucking charisma he even has here dude and this is 98 I yeah. mean fuck so next up we have Billy Kidman and Rey Mysterio Jr. versus just Kidman Uventu- <laughs> and Psychosis <laughs> Uh, this is a fun fucking match too this is fun yeah this is very good they were working their asses off here there's Um, some crazy ass spots in this one too I guess everybody in the arena's just kind of been sitting there for like 30 minutes right because there's been no match (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah. maybe uh, Wildcat Willie's out there shooting t-shirt cannons <laughs> oh, heads or something. Yeah, <laughs> He's shooting this... Mike Tanay out of a cannon for the audience's pleasure. This was under tornado tag rules, they say here, I think. Don't they? Or tornado okay, rules I thought, or something? Okay, Tony, I thought they said that, but then they do tags. They do tags. So yeah. it's not Lucha rules, I don't think? Uh, no. I think it might have been Lucha rules. It was, if it was it Lucha rules, they yeah. wouldn't tag. I think it was... No, because they said everybody was legal in the ring at one point. So... I don't know if that's what they consider a tornado. I think thing. it was. We don't want to throw this match out, and we know these guys are going to be in the are ring for a long time. Shit. Yeah, so yeah, just yeah. whatever. Just it was whatever. probably yeah, supposed to be right. lucha rules, but they just fucked that because they just. We're used not to expl- it. Mike today's not here to explain what the fuck. <laughs> that yeah, is, where's so Iron Mike shit. today? <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing that shit. Uh, so Kidman is the cruiserweight champion at this point, um, yes. and this is a pretty big match. A lot of, I mean, yeah, the name. I mean, those four names are fucking crazy, especially Hooven dude. Who Hooventude. So psychosis <laughs> and Hoovy are not on the same fucking page here. They are just no. 
They don't they like are... this shit. No. <laughs> they, uh, but, you know, they got to rep the LWO. Uh, Ray and Kidman do a combo where Ray throws him over his head and Billy Holy Kidman shit. catches him into a sit-out spine buster. Sky highs him. Yeah, that was fucking dope. Uh, Hoovy no arm bounces off the ropes and then Ray <laughs> bounces off the rope and runs him over. It's very seamless. They were cooking here for a minute. Hoovy hits a fucking springboard dropkick to the back of Ray's head as well, which is as hard insane. as he can. Yeah, just fucking shits on him with it. Psychosis just does a top rope leg drop to the floor while Tony Schiavone's yelling at Bischoff for not commentating. And <laughs> they don't call the spring no. fucking house show dive into the leg drop on the floor. Crazy. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? Uh, Kidman hot tag. The crowd is super hot for this. They're ready yes. for it. Uh, double head scissors over here. Kidman and Ray go up, double cross body to the outside. Awesome. Fucking Kidman and Ray hit the meanest springboard doomsday device I've ever seen on Psychosis. Holy shit. Dude, yeah, he picks him up. I was like, oh, what are they doing here? Maybe he's going to get countered. No, they just straight up fucking doomsday his ass. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. And then Ray goes for a springboard moonsault, uh, in, or, you know, lion salt to Hoovy who's standing. Hoovy catches him in the fucking Hoovy driver. <laughs> Anyways, oh Eric Bischoff, you got anything to say about this match? <laughs> 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 this is awesome, man. Uh, Billy Kidman accidentally missile drop kicks Rey Mysterio at the end here, and Psychosis yeah, like hits the leg drop for the win. Standing switch. I think Hoovy switched on Ray, and uh, Ray switched on him, and then Kidman drop kicked the missile. Kidman said, I'm going to do the drop kick. Just someone get in the way or don't. Everyone's pissed at Booker T for a steal, and everyone else has moved to Dyke. Four yeah, missile everybody drop doing kicks a damn so far. Kick. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, accidental drop kick. Uh, Psychosis gets the win on Ray. Cool Hot match, match man. here, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Pre-tape, Goldberg is still locked up. <laughs> Goldberg says, listen, we're both booked at all the arenas around the country. He's talking about him and Liz, of course. He says, the office puts up up in the hotels in the same place. And he says, in the gym? And Jack says, yeah, you know, the Obaki gym. And Goldberg says, well, she's a member there. And I'm always there because I own it. <laughs> 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 I want out of here now. And Jack says, come on, calm down now. We've got to check it out. He says, do your job and get me back to the arena. I am not guilty. I didn't do this crime. <laughs> so now it's time for the Kevin Nash Town Hall. Yeah, Mean Gene out here in the entranceway. Mean Gene says, I'm certain if you've been watching, and you have. <laughs> you threatened me? He <laughs> knows you're watching, bitch. You better not. <laughs> you've seen not what's been happening with... <laughs> <laughs> you've seen what's happening with Goldberg. And Mean Gene introduces Nash. And Nash says, at Starcade, a lot of people said Kevin Nash beat Goldberg. And as far as I'm concerned, Bill Goldberg got screwed. You know, I'm back there ready for my match with Goldberg. And I watch what happened with Liz. And it doesn't take a, a I don't What does he say? A, 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 he says somebody's name. I don't know what he, I don't remember what he said. But he I don't says, know. Nash uh, always in all of these would always try to be a super topical. Yeah. Yeah. Always super topical. <laughs> uh, you can't, you know, he says it doesn't take a smart, you know, a, a dumbass to figure out uh, who's behind this. And that's you, Hogan. And since the nature boy seems to be writing all the wrongs, nature, I'm asking you, let me have Hogan tonight. I know for a fact you have had eight days to go over the contracts, which is a crazy thing to assume he was able to do. Uh, <laughs> I know Hogan is still under contract. Call to warm up because I know that Goldberg and me will be in that ring for the world title. Still saying that he's going to face Goldberg tonight. Hogan, if you're out there, and I know you are, let's hook it up tonight. So Flair comes out, shakes Nasty's hand. He says, whether I agree how we got it or not, he's the world champion. I don't know what happened with Goldberg, but if Liz is involved, Hogan is pulling his strings. If Hogan's going to dance off to Hollywood and make a mockery of this company, <laughs> you're under contract in front of 40,000 people and the world's going to see you wrestle Big Sexy. And they shake hands again and Big Pop. And so Big Sexy versus Hogan for the belt tonight. This is not what it was advertised, you fucking piece of shit. But Nash says it's just a warm up. You're still going to get Goldberg. Don't worry. Don't worry. Oh, don't tune no. out. You're still going to get Goldberg. You're still going to get Goldberg. Come on, don't guys. Worry. Goldberg's coming back. Goldberg's here. Don't worry about that, bro. So we got a replay of the same opener with Nash versus Goldberg at Starcade. The, the, the exact same video. I skipped it. I said, fuck you. <laughs> Come on. You had to watch it because, you know, there's a little subtle changes in there. He showed the lock up well, five times and stuff. Well, they showed it uh, in hour one, which had no opposition. So they want to make sure, you know, if you're maybe for some maybe reason you just didn't never watch. watch the first hour of Nitro ever because, you know, it's bullshit. So pre tape, the cops are talking to Elizabeth again. Yes, uh, still just interrogating her. Uh, they said uh, the detective says, you know, uh, where 
exactly did this happen? And Liz says, you know, I told you. I, why do I got to say it again? He says, yeah, well, I want to hear it again. <laughs> Liz says, it was at the Coke machine, and I was getting myself a Diet Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> now hold on a minute. And there he is. He says, well, what was he wearing? And Liz says, well, he's wearing red tights. <laughs> Come on, Come on. Bro. Goldberg with red Go- tights? Goldberg as he ever. Even alt attire Goldberg <laughs> in a video game. Fucking I don't think he had red hell. tights. <laughs> And he said, you you know, he said he followed you all over the place. The Marriott, where else? And listen, you know, the arenas, the gym, the Obaki gym. Uh, they said, <laughs> you know, uh, well, you know, he said he followed you. Did he touch you or anything? Liz says, no. well, he's always there. He's always says something. And he's, he's all, come on. <laughs> she said, every, every time the phone rings, I pick it up and he hangs up. Uh, why do I got to defend myself? He says, he always hangs up. He says, yes, I'm the victim here. Don't you understand that? They said, all right, well, you're getting upset. Why don't we just let you chill here for a minute? He says, I want him locked up. I follow these reports and you're doing nothing. So a lot of controversy here still, and Goldberg is still guilty. Red tights, man. Red, like... <laughs> Elizabeth, you've been in the business goddamn too long. <laughs> you Red probably tights? watched every... You've been in the company for every Goldberg He's match. Yeah. you. You got red tights? Come on, man. That was, that was Horace Goldberg. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Bro. Come on, man. <laughs> so now Hulk Hogan with Suit Town Hall. God damn it. Can we get some more matches Fuck on this you, fucking man. show, no, please? No matches, okay. no wrestling. So Mean Gene introduces Hollywood Hulk Hogan. And Hogan comes out and the next president and, of the United States of America, everybody. <laughs> he's wearing black on black on black on black. <laughs> the wood master is here. <laughs> <laughs> mean Gene says, Well, all these political aspirations, where they stand the night. And Hogan says, You know something, Mean Gene. <laughs> it's quite obvious the world of wrestling still revolves around Hollywood. Check it out. <laughs> I was going to take this time tonight because on the Jay Leno show, dude, I promised my fans that have stuck with me through thick and thin that I was going to formally say goodbye to them tonight. And I couldn't think of a better place to do it than Atlanta, Georgia, the home of WCW. He's getting like, he's trying to be a baby face here for this. I was going to formally announce my vice presidential running mate, brother, for the U.S. election. But brother, when there's positive momentum, there is positive momentum. But when there's negative momentum, (laughs) there is really negative momentum. Dude, he is spitting. He is not wrong. <laughs> He's not wrong. Hogan spitting. Brother. Preach, brother. He says, when I witnessed this so-called phony hero, this sexual deviant Bill Goldberg, brother. <laughs> sexual <laughs> deviant? <laughs> He's taking liberties here, man. Goldberg probably has never like seen this back or knew what he was saying. No Fucking way. sexual he wasn't, he wasn't deviant even in the building. Yeah, Bill no Goldberg. Way. This fucking pervert, dude. <laughs> what the fuck? It just made me sick to my stomach, In the brother. Georgia Dome, babyface Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Georgia Dome, babyface Hulk Hogan. This sexual deviant, dude. <laughs> what the this, fuck? This little bald pervert, brother. <laughs> what the fuck? It made me sick to my stomach, dude. Especially knowing heard- what happens in the main event? Yes! <laughs> Holy... But the thing I've heard all around the building tonight that makes me just as sick, brother, is the fact that that tall, le- lanky spoon. No <laughs> way! Dude, Hogan calls Kevin Nash a lucky, big, a lucky. tall spoon. <laughs> Make sure you mean? get that one right there. Lucky, lucky. big, <laughs> tall spoon. Yeah, what the fuck does that mean? The new heavyweight champion, Kevin Nash, has been bragging and starting rumors by saying the only reason Hollywood retired was because he was afraid to fight me. That made me sicker than anything, me and Gene. <laughs> sicker than pervert, sexual, sexual demon, demon Goldberg. Demon. <laughs> <laughs> well, me and Gene says, well, as you know, Flair's the president, and he says it's a done deal. If you come out of retirement tonight, you get a shot at the world's title. Is that what he said? Because I don't think that's what he said. <sighs> He just said you're doing it. He didn't say yeah, if you come out of retirement. Right. Yeah, you're yeah. right. <laughs> Hogan says, well, you know, dude, they say Wolfpack's in the house. Well, brother, I've watched the Wolfpack huff and puff, brother. <laughs> and Ric Flair, he's oh, running things wee. around here. <laughs> if he says Hollywood <laughs> is going to wrestle, well, then, brother, after all the huffing and puffing, I guess I owe my fans one last retirement match. And the crowd pops, and he says, and to the Wolfpack out there, that's been huffing and puffing. <laughs> Oh, fuck it up and muffin, brother. After tonight, when I beat Kevin Nash and when I retire with the heavyweight title, dude, you can just call me Hollywood, the big bad wolf. <laughs> dude, <laughs> hey, Gene, just confused as hell. I'm gonna fuck you, wolf style, brother. <laughs> brother, what, dude? <laughs> 
Holy. So, <laughs> this is uh, up for my Wolfamaniac. Wh- the <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> he actually goes, how? Oh. Yeah, because they've been huffing and puffing for goddamn six months already. Yeah, you know, the the down, dude, this is Wolf warrior-esque style, bro. I swear to God, that was so <laughs> fucking you know, you big, tall spoon. <laughs> Dude. Well, when I become president, Tony, I'm gonna put you straight in hell jail, dude. Hell jail, holy! I don't know. <laughs> You're gonna suck this wolf cock, dude. <laughs> You're huffing and puffing, brother. <laughs> Why don't you huff and puff on these balls, brother? <laughs> so, horse. <laughs> do not. We got ho- do horse hogan. Don't <laughs> you talk about horse hogan like that? Sorry, dude. So uh, this is, you know, we we all know about the one that happens later. But this is the very first time that uh, Tony Schiavone, that he actually says it twice on this episode. Tony Schiavone says the following sentence after this Hulk Hogan town hall. He says, if you're even thinking about changing the channel to our competition, fans do not. Because we understand that Mick Foley, who wrestled here one time as Cat is Jack, is going to win their world title. Ugh. <laughs> That's going to put some butts in seats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing, dude. <laughs> I got one more thing to say, brother. Kevin asked that lucky, big, tall spoon dude. He so, used that spoon to smoke his crack, brother. <laughs> and he's a sexual deviant dude. And don't let him tell you otherwise, bro. <laughs> he was trying to look at my wolf cock, brother. <laughs> so, next time I did this. <laughs> Uh, so now we have a pre-tape. Chris Jericho is talking to the ref that ref his match earlier with Perry Scott Saturn. Dickinson. Yes. Scotty Dickinson. Jericho yeah, he says, says he is the best ref ever. I swear, baby. <laughs> Saturn ever lays his hands on you again. You should DQ this guy. Yeah, don't you? Uh, you know, you got to you, you prove you're the man around. You're the ring general. And, you know, he touches you. You got to DQ him, man. He's been throwing you around. So you got to do that. So that is, you know, what happened earlier, of course. Oh and then <laughs> it is time for the Scott Steiner with Buff Bagwell match. Did you write this? Because I wrote it all for you if you needed it. Uh, yeah, I have most of it here. Okay, sure. You can tell me if I skip anything. Or all right, no problem. I got you. Uh, yeah, so first thing that comes out is Scott Steiner coming out. He looks at the kid and goes, who's the freak, baby? <laughs> who's the said, genetic yes, freak? Sir. <laughs> and Buff says, you're the genetic freak. And Scott turns head and says, Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. He does not, no. Cut the music. I said, oh, oh no. wait a minute. Uh, no. I couldn't even believe this. Like, Harry Scott Steiner is like the TV fucking champ coming out. Fucking, he's on TV yeah. every single week cutting a promo. This? Perfect position for Scott Steiner to come. Tremendous. They, they were really like big IQ here for this. Yeah. Um, so Scott starts a promo off here. As all you women are tripping... Look at the greatest body in professional sports. <laughs> I need to know one thing. If you're tired of being with your fat, out of shape, <laughs> gas pumping redneck, and you want to be with a real man, because all you got to do is grab my hand and I'll take you to Loveland. And I'll show you who is the Superman. So this goes out to all my freaks out there. Big Papa Pump is your hookup. Holler if you hear me. Tremendous. I was, I James was Oli, I was happy with that. I thought it was over. It took a second. He stepped back. You know, <laughs> I was like, oh my god, oh my god, <laughs> you know. I couldn't believe there was a part two. <laughs> you know, ever since me and Buff burned Mark McGuire's hat and jersey, what? WCW has tried to censor me. <laughs> Every attack that I've done on WCW has been for a reason. And now that I have the belt, you can't censor me. I'm out of control and I'm out of my mind and I'm loving it. <laughs> Buff gets on the mic and he says, Scotty, Scotty, listen. Let me show you something I learned. You're going to love it. Watch this. Buff then just starts dancing. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> that, <yeah. laughs> Whose who's dance is this meant to Who is he mocking here? It had to be something going on. Because he know. mocks somebody and then he like feigns a heart attack. Yeah, he feigns a heart attack. Yeah, hit that, like, yeah, I'm assuming hands. it's a reference that I didn't understand. Yeah. Which I was, he said he got <laughs> over a triple <laughs> bypass surgery. Is that true? I don't know what's going on there. Uh, who, the buff? I don't know, that's what he said. I wrote Mark. Now, for some reason, <laughs> K-Dog wants me to beat him up one more time. Well, I don't have a problem with that. So, K-Dog, come on down here right now so I can beat you up. 
And then I'm coming out after one of you people <laughs> who thinks you're man enough to take me on. Dude, I had to replay the last part of that five times to figure out what he says because he said they're mad enough to make me and come on we're come mad to take me on <laughs> K-Dog <laughs> so Conan starts making his entrance <laughs> and Scott Steiner's still talking yo 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 K-Dog <laughs> well before uh, I think because he comes out he says come on rednecks you're all next after I beat him I'm coming out in the crowd <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna kill someone in the crowd they never they never show him no. doing it though so yeah, Conan gets out here. He comes out, does the shit. He's looking like Conan. He gets in you the ring. You knew exactly what this match was gonna be the second they fucking. That's got all in the I need. Ring. All and I need. No I way, bro. Anymore. Because he doesn't even get to hit the gimmick. <laughs> he doesn't do the clothesline. Does Fuck. He? That's no. all he's got, yeah. man. That's all he's yeah, got. Come on, right, well, man. Scotty's like, you'll get that tonight, brother. Conan gets in, and what does Steiner say? Yo, 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 K Dog. What you ain't have enough last week? <laughs> That's oh shit. <laughs> He's like, you want to get your butt kicked again, boy? Because I'll do it. You got that? And then Buff pushes Conan's head from behind. Conan turns around and bumps Buff. And then he starts fighting Steiner. He Irish whips Steiner, but Steiner just fucking clubs him down. Uh, Conan gets back, clothesline Steiner down. Not to not rolling clothesline, just regular clothesline. And grabs his nuts, at least. He does to grab the nuts, Don, at least. That's very, you know, got that at least. Scott Steiner's got to be the only guy I've ever seen that hits a running forearm to the back. <laughs> I've that, never seen right. that from anyone he, else. And he does it like, it's not like. That's how he starts he every just, match. That's Steiner's hot start is he runs. He like cuts you off with a running forearm to the back. And he's not running and then clubbing you. He's running with the arm up. Yeah. And then he stops you. and then clubs yeah, you. And then clubs you. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, Shivani on commentary says here. I just want to reiterate something I talked about before the commercial break. <laughs> I said, if I, you know, if you are thinking of changing the channel to the competition, we want to let you know that unlike us, they got their show in the can. Their show's been taped. Later tonight, Mick Foley, who once wrestled here as Cactus Jack, is going to win their world title. That's going to be their world champion. Ha ha. <laughs> he says, Eric, you got something to say about that? You got to laugh about that one. I mean, we're live every night. They're not. <laughs> K Dog follows Jeez. that up with the worst tornado DDT I've ever seen off the top of <laughs> <laughs> He just, he just, he like rolls. <laughs> Crazy. K Dog's hooking tonight. Uh, goes for the rolling clothesline, but Steiner ducks out of the way. Damn I say, so this, wait, no, wait, 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 he's got to hit that. And then he has the worst face buster of all time. <laughs> K Dog's cooking with dog shit tonight. Let's go. <laughs> K dog shit. K dog shit taco. I, I legit wrote Conan hit Steiner with a fucked up face buster. Uh, yeah, fucked up face buster. Conan then goes for the tequila sunrise, but Buff gets into the ring to attack Conan with the TV title. Ref DQs him before anything even happens, and then they start fucking up Conan. Slick. Johnson comes out here. NWO referee Slick shirt on. The dick. <laughs> Johnson. With broken arm. Broken arm. Uh, <laughs> Bill Alfonso whistle. NWO referee shirt. Custom made. The yeah, custom made. Steiner puts Conan in the Steiner recliner. And the re uh, Slick Johnson blows the whistle. Calls for the bell. Steiner then goes outside of the ring. Grabs a chair. Beats Conan with it. Then drops to his knees and poses in the center of the ring while Buff chokes out Conan. <laughs> and the last shot you see before commercial is Buff going up to the camera, showing the top of his top hat, which is an airbrush painting of himself, <laughs> next to his face. And he says, two good looking people. Amazing. <laughs> this is, without a doubt, one of the best tag teams that's ever existed. Um, Scott Steiner, did they have a tag title well. run? I believe so. Good, because they should. I believe I <laughs> remember them with many. the belt, but I could. It could be just in maybe my they mind. stole it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just had it in their hands. <laughs> Let me look up Buff Bagwell on Wiki real quick. Yeah, because uh, WCW tag title history, maybe. Yeah, it would definitely be under that. Yeah, he was, um, what? Oh I know no, Buff dude, he would never. They never were tag champs. Really? Why? It was Buff, Buff and Shane Douglas. Yeah, it was a tag team champ with Shane Douglas, of course. Scotty Riggs, of course, of course. Scotty <laughs> Riggs, right, fellas? Of course. Uh, the Patriot and Two Cold Scorpio, but never with wow. Scott Steiner. But he That's was with so Scotty weird, Riggs. They were, they were such a great... I don't care about fucking Scotty Riggs. It was Scotty Riggs. <laughs> if you I know, remember back, goddamn Mel's. I know, no, American Mel's. No, Scott Steiner was no. a part of that. It was like the free birds <laughs> with the triple thing. You got the, you no, just, he was not in yeah. the... It was, no, uh, not tech. No, not technically. 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 Let me tell you no. something. If you're Don't tired of being with your well, fat, you know. out of shape, <laughs> gas pumping, gas redneck, pumping. and you want to be real, man, 
gas, gas pump is great. All you gotta do, I grab my hand. I love how the sentences didn't even go together no. in this at all. He because he breathe. starts off with, as all you women are tripping, looking at the greatest body <laughs> in professional sports. I need to know, know one, one thing. thing. He <laughs> needs to know one thing. If you're tired of me with your fat, out of shape, gas pumping redneck. I said, it's, what are we talking about? And all you, you want to be <laughs> real man? What? All what? I do. What are you talking about? What are we the gas pumping? I said, like, you know, at the end of it, I said, Big Papa Pump, it's your yeah, hookup. Yeah, yes, he is. <laughs> you know, ever since we bumped our I could not believe jacket, it, bro. Hitting the you know was awesome. Oh, my God. The backup. Put the mic back up. Yeah. You know, I said, Jesus. I was like, <laughs> I had to make sure I was still alive at that place. So here we go. That's and awesome. And they brought up Mark McGuire. We talk about Mark McGuire all the fucking Every time. Every week. Kevin they Sammy burn- Sosa. <laughs> when the fuck did they burn Mark McGuire's hat and jersey? <laughs> I hope that was like an episode of Nitro Side. We're gonna watch the burning of Mark McGuire's hat in Jersey. You steroid abusing, out of shape, <laughs> gas pumping redneck. <laughs> oh, wait, did we watch that? Because for some reason, I saw a poster saying Scott Steiner calls out Mark McGuire, and in the comments, somebody said Steiner says the show me state of St. Louis, and I feel like I remember. Us no, he talking says about that, but that's that. not. Also, this is this is a picture from what's going on here. Uh, Buff oh, Bagley. <laughs> We have, we, to got, watch, we have not watched this. We have Bob not seen that. We need, Mark to, McGuire? we need to watch this Holy sometime. Why is he got heat with Mark McGuire? What the fuck? Because he's using steroids <laughs> like an out of shape gas pumping redneck. That's, like me. You know, I'm not using state. steroids. No way. We got to wow, find gotta this find and watch this somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We got to look this Holy up. Holy right? man. That is Someone awesome. Someone got to find that for us. us. Let us know. You're looking at the greatest body in professional sports. <sighs> oh Fuck my you, God. Mark McGuire. You yeah, bitch. you bitch. <laughs> Holy, that's awesome. This was like, look, man. Nitro legit, like Steiner and Buff Bagwell is like the greatest what tag a great team they duo. had. Yeah. They were cooking every fucking week. I don't think there's a single time we've ever seen this where they had an L. Any, any. No, time. Steiner and Buff. Uh, Steiner and Buff are always money. No, That's wrong. Dog beautiful. shit. WWE never made any stars. <laughs> never happened. There was nobody. Yeah, but yeah. apparently Buff was never good or over. Never. Steiner over sucked. Or good. Nobody. Had, they were all dog shit. Nobody steroids. was good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> steroids. <laughs> it's part of on steroids. Watch yeah, Rods be- better. Put, they put butts in seats. I don't know. You should probably watch that program. I always hear a bunch of bullshit, Tony. What fucking ups to go to? I'm so sick. WCW. Okay, so they're still calling it WCW NWO sold out. Yes, even though There's, Flair said it's not. He said, fuck the NWO. But apparently yeah, well, at the end of know. the show, we're still coming back. Yeah, life is a journey. Winding, twisting, turning. Never knowing how the path chosen will affect your life forever. And WCW sold out. <laughs> There's no turning back. <laughs> okay, I like this yeah. promo for it. I thought it was cool. I thought it was like a hype video for Mortis or something. Well, I didn't always, know what was going on here. Back then, they always had like a theme for it. So like they do like mm-hmm. the winding road thing or whatever. They always like, did some propaganda video. Always. So now it's Wraith. Or I'm sorry, Wrath versus Bam Bam <laughs> <The> Wraith. <Riggler. laughs> yeah, Wraith. Dead by daylight, yeah. Wraith was his next character. <laughs> <laughs> Wrath versus Bam Bam Bigelow. So Wrath comes out and he grabs a mic. Or no, he comes out and B- this is the first time Bischoff has talked in two hours. He leans in. Th- they're talking about Goldberg on commentary. And Bischoff leans in the mic and he says, Jailbait. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wrath is, uh, gets the mic here and Wrath says, I you couldn't know. believe this. <laughs> I couldn't believe this. I knew, I knew whatever they're doing here with Wrath is coming to an end very shortly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He says, you know, for the last six months, I've been plowing through the competition plowing like a competition. runway <laughs> <laughs> through like a runway freight train and i know you people pay money tonight see raf drop the thermonuclear meltdown on the dome <laughs> thermonuclear meltdown on you fat out of shape <laughs> gas pumping pump rednecks and you know what i really don't have a problem with that what i do have a problem with is no competition so if there's anybody in the back Anybody back there in the back? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's cooking. <laughs> he's got the guts. I could be a man and step up to the plate. Come on down. And Bam Bam comes out to no music. <laughs> what the fuck? Bam Bam, no music, and looks like he doesn't want to be there. Well, he didn't. Yeah. Sad. And this match sucked. It sucked, dick. So, Bam Bam <laughs> answers the challenge. Wolfcock, uh, dude. 
<laughs> they fight into a fucking double count out. That's like, dude, God damn it. Dude, they just keep, it's like five minutes of them constantly brawling back out to the floor. I'm like, how is this not counted out? Why did the ref not throw this out sooner? And then uh, Bam Bam tries to hit him with a fucking chair. Uh, he brings a chair in the ring. The ref kicks the chair out of the way. Bam Bam gets back, body dropped out of the power bomb he was going for. Then Wrath cactus clotheslines Bam Bam over the top. Bam Bam tries to hit him with a chair. The ref gets bumped while trying to break up their fight. And then they just calls for the bell, and then they just keep fighting to the back. This was bucket balls. And Dude, this dick is and right back. after. Right after they say, "Yeah, don't watch Raw. Raw sucks." And then you get yeah. this bullshit. Get the shitter. <laughs> yeah. Dude, keep in mind that was the first match that we watched since the tag <laughs> match. <laughs> no, How come on, bro. Scott that? Steiner versus Scott Steiner. Okay, oh, sorry. You're right. Sorry. With the, with sorry. the face buster and the I tried to forget DDT. that one. What? No, hold on, man. Are you talking about the <laughs> man over here with the hat? Yeah, I'm talking about I'm talking about one of the men in that. I hear you. That's true. Pre-tape, uh, cops are back with Miss Elizabeth here, uh, and they are still questioning. Some what do you need to <laughs> just call her ass out? We want to clarify some info here. You happen this this happened often? How often? And this is how many times do I got to say it happens <laughs> all the time? And it happened most recently. It just happened a while ago. And where did it happen? At the Coke machine. <laughs> okay, man. Well, you said it was at the water fountain. Now, were you getting a Pepsi they, out of the Coke machine? They started machine? getting crazy with they, it. They yeah. said, oh, the fucking <laughs> water fountain? <laughs> yeah. well, were you getting a, a Pepsi out of the Coke machine or a Coke out of the Pepsi machine? Or or was it water, actually? And, you know, don't all the wrestlers stay at the Marriott and that gym? Don't all the wrestlers go there, the Obaki gym? Goldberg owns that place. I wonder why he's there. Uh, you've been looking at your watch this whole interrogation. Can I see that? This says it was a gift. I guess they were trying to imply Hogan bought her that watch. Maybe that happened on a show before or something like that. Uh, he says, you were saying he was wearing black tights. Uh, and he says, I think she said red tights. And Liz says, I was seeing red. I don't know. He wears black tights, Miss Elizabeth. <laughs> 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 I hope you know perjury is a serious crime. You could be in serious trouble. We're talking jail time here, honey. And not only that, <laughs> you're wasting our time. Come on, partner. <laughs> so Liz starts fessing up here. She says, listen, it this was a mistake. Matter of fact, I know it was a mistake. It wasn't Bill. A lot of these bald wrestlers around here, it was Horace Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> that was, he was so wearing crazy. Red and he was licking balls. <laughs> that was so easy. You know what? It wasn't Bill. There's a lot of these bald-headed wrestlers out here. <laughs> he was a lot of bald guys. I feel like calls Goldberg his world title shot again. Please give him my apologies. I feel really bad. And she's smiling and laughing. And nothing happens to her on the rest of this episode here. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, just. Yeah. She lied. And the, co and the cops say whatever. He said, tell Goldberg I'm sorry. And then he, the cops say, we don't give a fuck. Go tell him yourself we're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're out. out of the room. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> uh, so we get the wow, Nitro wow, Girls. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Eric Bischoff is still just chilling at the desk. You don't give a fuck. He's snoring on commentary while they show former Falcons head coach Jerry Glanville. Ooh. <laughs> you know, Jerry, Jerry, Boys. Jerry. Uh, next up, we got <laughs> Brian Adams with Vincent versus DDP. Holy Face fuck. Brian I, Adams. Uh, this is no wait, 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 Tony. He hasn't started the gas yet. This is regular Brian Adams. He's not on the he's gas. He's not based yet? yet? Oh, okay. No, he's not based yet. This is this just... is the only match I skipped. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got you on this one. I, hit, I couldn't tell you how many times I hit 10 seconds forward yeah. until I saw the diamond cutter. <laughs> well, the people's champ DDP is here, and so is the real people's champ, Brian Adams. With the sideburns and Vincent. Oh, Holy shit, man. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. Smack the ass city. Uh, so DDP with the house show dive. Uh, dude, this match went like forever. Dude, it's so Brian, long. Uh, for no reason. They just want to see the goddamn time. Yeah, you're right. Brian Adams with the pile driver for a two. <laughs> Fucked up pile, pile driver, driver. Uh, DDP and Brian Adams actually are wrestling a full length match here. <laughs> 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 holds, holds the whole match. They're doing holds. Vin Vincent grabs DDP's leg, but he pushes him off, and then he gets a diamond cutter off the second rope to win. That was very cool diamond cutter, by the way. It looked very cool. And then he leaves to the crowd because he's the people's champ. Him doing the entrance, he comes out and he walks through the crowd. It's very cool. It is uh, awesome. 
if shot, you know, a lot of you might not have watched. Just want to let you know, DDP was yes, very over, <laughs> super over, actually, incredibly over, but one of know, the most over, you could say. Some would say he wasn't. Yeah, well, yeah, I would. <laughs> <laughs> you can have sex with my wife. <laughs> You're gonna fuck my wife, or well, I'll fuck your career. I'll tell you that much. Pre-tape time. Uh, cops tell Goldberg that <laughs> Goldberg Liz is, lied. <laughs> Goldberg is banging his head on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> thump, thump, thump. And Jackson, stop doing that. Calm down, man. <laughs> I just talked to the detectives. Miss Elizabeth dropped the charges and admitted she was lying. Goldberg stands up. He says, get these cuffs off of me now. Take me to the dome. Take me to the dome. Now, I want to reiterate what they said at the top of the show. This is across the street from the building. So we go to the ring, and it's time for the main event. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's fucking main event time. Uh, Hulk Hogan versus Kevin Nash for the title. Uh, Michael Buffer doing all the big introductions. Awesome. Awesome fucking stuff here. I love the Michael Buffer shit, man. It was awesome. He made it feel like a big deal. He, he Even his verbiage, he says this is the first main event of 1999, the ultimate grudge match for the heavyweight championship of the world. Pyro goes off as he hits the let's get ready to rumble. I'm like, holy fuck, this is cool, man. I, I, yeah, I wanted to talk about Tony Schiavone real quick. Tony Schiavone, oh, sure. uh, the way that this show is laid out is like it's a show that's evolving in front of them. And then yeah. Tony Schiavone kind of leads them through the show and what's happening sure. on the show and stuff like that. So it's not necessarily like, you know, like they're, they have segmented parts of the show. It's just a show that's happening, a wrestling show that's happening. And, you know, they're calling the action as they see it and all that stuff. Yeah. So like the stuff is scheduled and like they go down the list and he's like, yeah, you know, this wasn't on the, the run sheet we have for tonight or anything. Cause like, they're just kind of like calling the action as it is like WCW yeah, like a real entity. Sport. Yeah. Right. And they're like, Jared to just call what, what they see on the, on the thing, which Tony Schiavone was very good at. And he was also very good at making people on the broadcast feel like real people. Like he'd be like, I love the Mike Tanay thing he did where he's like, you know, Mike Tanay would usually talk about Japan or like the yeah, background yeah, of the wrestler. And he's like, damn, I kind of miss Mike Tanay because he would have known a lot about that kind of shit. Yeah, fuck you, Eric Bischoff, you bitch. I'll and I thought that was awesome. Like the way that he made Mike Tanay feel like a real person is it's really easy when you watch It made stuff. you miss Mike Tanay. Yeah. yeah, it's real easy when you're watching stuff to like, especially for commentators, to just feel like they're a voice and they don't really have any, you know, they're there to put over the show or whatever and do whatever. Sure. But on, for whatever reason on WCW, they felt like real people. Like, I, I felt like they, they didn't like everything or they did like everything or, you know, or th whatever the case may be. Right. And the way that they, they told stories, like Tony didn't know a goddamn thing about anything other than what's happening in WCW, but Mike Tanay did know everything. And Larry Zbysko was a fucking wrestler. You know yeah, what I mean? He was a wrestler yeah. and he would told you about the old school and how wrestling should be and why he did this whole and that old. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, I thought like everyone felt very real on WCW, which was like way fucking different than WWF. Like they- No, what they, the fuck are no, you trying to say there, Sean? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something right now, Sean. I don't think a goddamn thing about you. I'll tell you that right now, <laughs> well, how about I come over and I'll smack you? Well, why don't you go ahead and do it, Dan, and then we'll fucking have a little match. You piece of shit. You fucking goddamn fucker. You piece of shit. Yeah, you like that fucking piece of shit. No, I don't like that at all. <laughs> way, way fucking different presentations <laughs> on the WWF. <laughs> when was that Tony? You say something about me, some bitch? Well, yeah, how about I come out there and I fucking kill you? Yeah, I heard you had a big ass dick. You want to say something about that, Tony? <laughs> Yeah, you, you know, horse me ding dong over there, Peachy guy. What are you gonna do with that? Thing, I just huh? tune you guys out. By the way, did you see I found the actual <laughs> Atlanta Georgia precinct to the Georgia Dome here? And there's a Google's map for you. Oh, let's see, car drive four minutes. All right, it's down yeah, go one on, street. It's on the same street. You can just well, the go car on. mile. Let, let's one go back to the very one. first pre-tape. They put him in the car, and the car <laughs> that bitch dude gutted dude, out the goddamn Goldberg could walk in seven minutes to get there from the place. They're at the precinct in ninety seconds because they come back from commercial, and he's already inside. Yeah, so he could walk seven minutes and get there, but. You know. He could have ran. Goldberg's supposed to be fast, football boy. Come on, run, football boy. <laughs> football boy. <laughs> you know what football player would have made it? Boy. <laughs> you know who would have made it? Hunter Rayner. He's a good football boy. Uh, yeah. Hunter Rayner would have ran Tor there Torn MCL. Legs. Yeah, torn yeah. MCL, torn ACL. He would have still sprinted there. Absolutely. He would have won the main event, too. You're right. Hulk Hogan versus Kevin Nash for the WCW title is uh, up here. Steiner yes. and Hogan are out here first. I love Hogan, that Steiner came out here well. Me too. Hogan's in the black shirt and pants and bandana still. Because he wasn't President ready. Hogan. He wasn't ready to wrestle. He didn't know he was having the match. Yeah, he was. I don't, and I don't need my boots, Who's dude. the vice president, bro? <laughs> I, do they ever say who it was going to be? Is it Bischoff? Who is Hulk Hogan's <laughs> vice president? It's got to someone's Terrible has to have it. Yeah, probably, brother. 
I'm trying to find 1999, but it's just not. How about working. it's me? Good old yeah, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't know what the hell you are. Yeah, you weren't coming to this fucking company. Fucking you called my daddy piece of shit. Yeah, I'll come over to that company and I'll fucking yeah. drag my balls all yeah, over yeah, this Well, company, I'll drag you know? my big ass I'll wear my underwear the wrong way and I'll shit all over this fucking with my big old asshole. What do you think about that, Tony? Huh? Are you guys talking? I'm, like, I'm looking for the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you guys Nash? say so much bullshit. I just don't even listen anymore. Ar I don't know why it's arguing JRs. <laughs> why chicken. Are both J why are both JRs. <laughs> <laughs> Dual JRs. <laughs> He's Red it with himself. Red and blue JR. A Angel and devil JR. <laughs> <laughs> it's on JR's shoulders. <laughs> So, uh, so we got yeah, Nash so, and all yeah. out here too. Nash comes out with the most egregious Spinny pyro. pyro. Every pyro they could have possibly that's ever like the, pyroed. That's the greatest entrance of all time. But even Ke Kevin Nash is thrown off. Like he didn't even know. He turns around and more pyro goes off. He's like, "Holy shit, that's a lot of pyro." If I say Kevin Nash pyro gif, you probably all understand what I'm talking about. That's what this is from. Because <laughs> Nash looks yeah, Nash looks back and he's like, "Oh shit, all right." There's <laughs> more. Out, There's more. There. Then Nash does the NWO point to the back, and out comes Scott Hall, Wolfpack shirt tucked into the jeans. <laughs> Big pop for Scott Hall, by the way. Yeah, huge. Yeah, it was awesome. They get to the ring here, Nash tears his fucking shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> Hogan on the outside before, by the way, says, I don't need no stinking wrestling boots to beat that bitch's ass. I said, whoa. <laughs> it's not very presidential, you brother. It's holy shit. Uh, Shivani says, I know we're getting close to the 11 o'clock hour. We're going to stay right here. Stay with us. These aren't taped matches. They're happening live. <laughs> uh, by the way, also, they are grandstanding crazy in this one. 40K Dude. people in this arena are going nuts right now. Yeah, this is This is what World Championship Wrestling is all about. Yeah, this is fucking awesome. Uh, Nash said that. rips the shirt. Like you said, <laughs> yeah, you're right. No, this actually is what World Championship Wrestling is all about. You're right. It's 100% yeah. what it was. It's it's well, the like, truth. Like, Do you think they knew? Worse, better or worse. That it was going to, like, what? They knew it was going to, they, they, because most of the time they just call the fucking show. Do they know that they, it was going to be the finger? No, I'm sure do? there was a run sheet with the, you know, that on it. Yeah, I, you know what? That's a good point. I don't know. So Nash is in center of the ring. Hogan circling him. And Hogan steps up to him. And he winds back, goes for a punch, he stops. And then he pokes Kevin Nash in the chest. Kevin Nash flatbacks. Hogan covers him. One, two, three. Ding, ding, ding. Shivani says, what's going on here? <laughs> Steiner and Scott Hall get in the ring. <laughs> Everyone is celebrating. Everyone in the crowd is very confused. Dude, this was like NPC celebrating. They're in the ring like with their arms raised. Woo! <laughs> Dude, it's def it's the exact celebration when you won a title in like S V R O seven and then you stop right in front of the camera with your big smile and your hands up. <laughs> yeah. Uh Michael Buffer announces Hogan is the winner and new heavyweight champion of the world. What the fuck? What the fuck? Unbelievable, man. Unfucking believable. Forty thousand people just wanted this to This is the greatest moment in the history of wrestling right yeah, here. It's unbelievable. This is what world championship wrestling is all about. Well, Goldberg's here. <laughs> now, you thought, in your head, you had to be thinking throughout this show, Goldberg's going to come back into the Georgia Dome. 40K people are going to lose their mind, and he's going to fucking go Dominate. Nuts. He's going Goldberg mode, baby. Yeah, so Goldberg pulls up in the car, and he runs in. He's sprinting into the arena with the jacket For some on. reason, the cops are with him going into the arena. Make sure no one, like, chasing tackles him or they're, something. They're running with him, yeah. <laughs> Goldberg, you're actually still under arrest. Get back here. <laughs> uh, so Goldberg runs straight to the fucking ring. It was awesome. This visual was so good. They had, like, a camera pulled back. Fuck. It looks Full awesome. Full sprint from outside, through through the back, through Gorilla, to the stage, and then seamlessly to the ramp. It was awesome. So Goldberg runs straight to the ring, karate kicks Steiner. I'm like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> Suplex to Hall, super kick to Nash. Hogan him. says, not tonight, brother. <laughs> no way, dude. I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to slap you with this title. He, like, paintbrushes Goldberg with the belt. Goldberg has to sell it. Oh, it was oh, so dude, bad. Oh. He barely, he's like, oh. And he, like, kind of stutter steps because he doesn't know if he's to sell it. And then Hogan hits him again, and then he crumbles. People are throwing trash into the ring. Just full things of popcorn just fucking <laughs> going in the ring. There's fucking wow. drinks. Hogan throws Goldberg into the ropes. Goldberg spears Hogan. I'm like, oh, shit. Let's oh, go. Shit. Crowd's losing it. Luger is out here to help. I said, what? I, I said, oh, God, here we go. 
Goldberg gets Hogan set up for the jackhammer, running double axe handle from Luger. Let's go! That's classic <laughs> Lex Luger right there. That's the yeah. big boss. Cuts off Goldberg. Bischoff says, Shazam! By golly! G Willikers! Oh, Tony, how could this be? Tony, how could this happen? <laughs> he puts Goldberg in the torture rack. Holy still has- the rack! It was so <laughs> sick! Dude, oh, Goldberg man. still has the cuffs on. <laughs> Two pairs. I of love them. fucking Lex Luger. <laughs> Get his ass up there, man. Hell yeah. He, Chained he up. Did. Fucking Luger. Just give him the rack, man. He got Let's him up there. Go. Holy. He's the crowd not as happy as James is about this. Sorry, crowd. bro. Lugers came out there, base as hell, chain no shirt. He's whooping somebody's ass. And it's you, brother, you bald headed bitch. <laughs> So they he fucks him up. They handcuff Goldberg to the bottom rope. Scott Hall has the taser. This taser that he used Grr. on Starcade. And he he starts using it on Goldberg in the corner. And on commentary, Bischoff is selling it for him. He's going, man. All like forever. This ain't even the worst and one that he does. It's not, dude. So Brother. they tase him. They tase him. They tase him. Nash rips off Goldberg's shirt. He's dead in the corner. They all have spray paint. They're shaking the spray paint. <laughs> Hogan starts spray painting NWO for life on Goldberg's back in red. And Bischoff needed to commentate this. <laughs> 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 he does that for no joke one minute straight. Like genuinely it's tough, just man. Sh- yeah. Sh- and then he started they, in the middle of it, Scott Hall's fucking t- tasing him, so he's going shh, shh, I, 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 shh, shh. I'm like, holy fuck, I'm watching Raw. Like, <laughs> God damn it. They fucking, <laughs> dude, Scott Steiner, you can, I think Goldberg gets shoot heated at this, because Scott Steiner starts spray painting Goldberg's head he while he's being tased. <laughs> starts, and Goldberg, like, swats him, like, get the fuck out of here. Spray right? painting black and red nothing on his big ball head. <laughs> that was fucking dude, so Dude, they sick. buried the fuck out of Goldberg, man. I, yo. Dude, they wa- he was a he was a fucking sexual deviant piece dude, of shit. Fucking burger, jailbird bitch. for the whole show. Whole show, and then he his he gets to hit three moves, and then he gets fucking tased, torture racked, spray painted, and fucking beaten up. <laughs> oh my god, man, that's cr- now I'm now I'm thinking back to I, like I I know they all knew what was going down, like Kevin Nash coming out with the egregious pyro. Yeah, oh my, it's a good god. night to be Kevin Nash. <laughs> Great night. That pyro so- is nuts, man. Hogan spray paints the world title NWO. Steiner says, we're back in the saddle, baby. Nash says, can you say deja vu? And the show ends with Steiner saying, the new (laughs) world order for life. Fuck. (laughs) You know. (laughs) (laughs) Goldberg got jabronied like nobody has been jabronied before. fuck. Fuck. Everyone wanted to see it. Yeah, all I had to take was a little more respect that you would have, like, this would have been hot for a Luger and fucking turning and joining and fucking, like, this would have been awesome. Yeah. Like, fucking. Why didn't they just do everything they did except with Goldberg? Yeah, they, no, they could have <laughs> done, they could have <laughs> done the title change and then Goldberg comes down and destroys them all. That would have been cool or some shit, but. They should, they could have still did Goldberg and Nash and just did all of this. Or, like, had Hogan get into the match somehow. Oh, fuck, it's a triple threat. And then Hogan and fucking Nash both beat up Goldberg and then Nash still fucking takes the fall. They could have did all the same. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. But, <laughs> there was uh, no reason not to yeah, have Goldberg but, yeah, well, on the show like fuck this. Fuck you, brother. Yeah, look, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running for president. You I'm are the not. Wolf, dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's not the Wolfman. I am, brother. This is legendary because of, of course, what happens afterwards. So I will now talk about uh, the Observer talking about what went happened? What went down here? Uh, January 11th, 99 Observer. Uh, this is talking about both Raw and uh, Nitro here. About the Raw finish. What I think I talked about this when we did this, so there's like some we'll segue here, but it's okay. Raw main event finish, which was, you know, fo- how Foley won the title mm-hmm. from Rock. 
Uh, that wasn't the planned finish since Austin wasn't originally going to be at TV, but when he flew in for the Super Bowl commercial taping, they asked him to be involved with the title match finish. Aside from a spot where Rock used the rock bottom through the English announcer's table, the match was nothing special, but the post-match celebration was tremendous. WCW put the title back on Hulk Hogan at the Georgia Dome when Bill Goldberg was held hostage at the police station and couldn't get across the street for 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Nash simply laid down for Hogan at 1 minute and 38 seconds when Hogan tapped him with his finger and they all got up laughing. Hogan, Nash, Luger, Hall, Scott Steiner, and Bagwell will form the new Wolfpack since they didn't want to drop the moniker because Wolfpack is the hottest selling merchandise. And the idea is to recreate the 1996-97 uh, run of the group because that's when the company caught fire. Hope they are, Meltzer says, hope they remember another key of that period was they were presenting incredible matches on television and signed nearly every great young wrestler <laughs> in the world and were blowing their opposition away in the ring, something that is far from the case today. <laughs> Goldberg did a run-in after and destroyed a few guys until Hall zapped Goldberg a few times with a taser. He was handcuffed to the ropes and spray-painted red NWO on his back and they spray-painted his head, which he didn't seem thrilled about. <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> Shocking. The fans live were furious since they'd been promised a Goldberg versus Nash main event, which never took place, and instead got a main event where two guys didn't touch. Overall, the Georgia Dome was an absolute disaster of a show, and it would probably take 18 pages to list all the reasons why. During the show on two occasions, the chimpanzees running WCW told Shivani to say that Raw was taped and that Fo Foley would be winning the world title on the opposition show, so don't switch channels. Nitro was beyond awful and he was telling people there's a world title change going to happen on the other channel. Who runs this circus? He also knocked Foley laughing about a company that would make him champion, which isn't going to help Shivani's rep with the wrestling fans since Foley is universally respected. WBF shot back when they heard what was being said, since even even though the show is taped, the commentary is done live and said they weren't going to present a main event that starts two minutes before the show goes off the air and consists of nothing but walking and talking. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they did live commentary on the tape draws. I didn't either. That's crazy. I, yeah, I, did, I actually didn't know that either. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, and then from The Observer from January 18th, 1999, with the WWF doing everything to get the word out about its title change and WCW doing them the favor of making sure the rating gap would be as much as possible by announcing the WWF's change as well, Raw set its all-time record with a 5.76, <laughs> even beating Jesus Mark's set Christ. on nights that Nitro was preempted for basketball and went unopposed with an 8.08 .08 share to Nitro's 4.96 rating with a 6.92 share. With Nitro doing a 4.68 in the head-to-head -head two plus hours, that meant a combined rating of 10.54 for wrestling overall, which translates to seven million eight hundred thousand homes and probably around eleven point seven eight million total viewers, which is fucking crazy. Yeah, wrestling of was rocking. Fuck. While WWF solidly won the title match head-to-head -head battle as most of the Rock versus Mankind match today, 5.9 rating to the Hogan match, a NAS match with today, 4.6. WCW did gain a slight bit of moral satisfaction because it's overrun when Bill Goldberg showed up, picked the rating up to a 6.5 while WWF with the Steve Austin run in the title match finish and post-match celebration fell to a 5.1. WWF won all eight quarters with WCW <laughs> only coming close for the quarter where Nash and Flair were out there setting up the Nash-Hogan match and then Hogan returned with his first interview doing a 5.1 while WWF did a 5.2 for Godfather versus Test. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. <laughs> It's also the crazy biggest... that they were both rocking fives. That is crazy. Yeah. yeah. The biggest advantage point, a 6.2 for the Road Dog versus Al Snow hardcore title match going against DDP versus Brian Adams, which did a 4.4. Fuck you, Brian Adams. <laughs> I fucking knew this guy was dog You know what's shit. also crazy is that there was like <laughs> 4 million people that did not care. Flipped. About no. no, there was probably only what six hundred thousand. Oh, sorry, yeah, that yeah, flipped. yeah, yeah, sure, sure. There was sure. probably four million people that only cared what was happening on WCW. It didn't matter if WWF was like having sex on television. Yeah, They're not no switching way. Over. With Elmo, yeah, yeah no doesn't way. matter, bro. Yeah, all those fans when when W when WCW died, they just fucking quit watching wrestling. Yeah, that's not that shit, man. man. Yeah, absolutely. That's crazy. DDP and Brad Adams, which did a 4.1, came immediately after Eric Bischoff ordered Shivani to give away the title change and emphasize it. While WWF was going to win the ratings handily either way, based on viewer patterns, it appears that announcement led to approximately 375,000 homes switching to Raw, which is exactly the opposite of what it was designed to do, and exactly what anybody with half a brain could have predicted it would do. So, uh, yeah, that was... Uh... Well, all of 300 fucking thousand of those fat... Out of shape, <laughs> gas pumping rednecks. Go watch that show. <laughs> 
What a crazy, crazy time, man. And you know what? I think one of my earliest memories of wrestling, I think I've said it before on the show a few times, but it was this. Oh, wow. Doom That's crazy. It was like one of my earliest <laughs> memories of wrestling. You tuned Someone in to Brian Adams guy? No. Yeah, you tuned in for that. <laughs> tuned and in after the rest. that. I was I was watching I was watching Godfather and Test. Oh, That's what really okay, got me. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> Sounded like a lot got a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, it did. So, Everybody. So surely at the you know, the next pay per view they're gonna at sold out, they're gonna give us Goldberg versus Hogan, right? Is this gonna happen? Well No, that brother. doesn't have it. <laughs> brother Go they do, Goldberg they do Goldberg <laughs> Goldberg <scared>. Scott Hall. <laughs> Dude <and> Stun Gun <laughs> ladder match. Goldberg and Scott Hall. Ed. Is the main? Is the main, yep. Goldberg, Scott Hall, Stun Gun, Ladder Match. Hogan's not There's even, no title Hogan's match? Hogan's not even on that not. show. No. That's, he, Hogan's not on the he, show. He's running for president. He might, <laughs> oh he might be in the, he might be involved in the angle, but he's not like on a, in a match or anything. The title's not defended. Uh, then you think maybe Super Brawl, you know, they'll run that match back. Uh, no. Sure. Uh, Hogan versus Flair. Uh, Goldberg versus Bam Bam. <laughs> in, any, any of the low tier WCW pay-per-views, Hogan does not. He's not showing up. He's just oh not. Oh my god! Any of them that he thought weren't like going to sell crazy, he just wouldn't show up. Same thing with Nitro. If he so thought, he doesn't take the blame. Yeah, no that's exactly what it was. If if, if oh he thought god. Nitro was going to get a low rating that week or a low house, he just wouldn't show up. Yeah, <laughs> and then and then so when they would sick. draw a big house, he would show up, and then he would tell Ted Turner and TNT and all that that the reason the house was so big it was because because Hogan was there, brother. <laughs> oh the statistics my. show it, dude. <laughs> But that don't worry, uncensored, right they'll, there. uncensored, they'll run the match back, right? No, uh, Hogan Flair, the barbed wire <laughs> steel cage first blood match. I think we watched that before, did we not? Is Hogan champion there still? Oh, uh, yeah, Hogan's uh, there, but Flair wins the title Who's there. the champ? Oh, he, oh, he, he is a champ, okay. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, maybe Gold, Goldberg's not on that show, by the way, also. <laughs> you think oh, my God. Goldberg uh, eventually fights... Does Ke Goldberg get hurt? He eventually fights hurt? Kevin Nash at Spring Stampede 99, so uh, that's a okay, few months great. away. Does he, he win? Wins. Yeah, he, he defeats him. Okay. But it takes great. just a while, you know, for him to... Goldberg versus Scott Hall in a stun gun ladder match that's is right. a crazy main event. Okay, wow. Well, Goldberg yeah. does win that by... Tasing Scott Hall and then hitting with the spear and jackhammer. <laughs> I mean, I guess that goes with the angle, but they never ran back the the Goldberg World Title match. It just never happened. Wow. Okay. I don't want to work him again, dude. <laughs> Not happening, brother. I'm <laughs> gonna be the president, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fight this bald son of a bitch, dude. Well, there you go. That was WCW Nitro for January fourth, nineteen ninety nine, and.